In January of 2022, I had just had a baby a month before and was a brand new mom. My biggest fear before having my son was that I was going to lose my desire to write, to create anything, to make YouTube videos like this for other amazing writers like you. I was terrified. <laughs> that first month after having Zion, I was exhausted. It was so emotional. Postpartum is no joke. I just remember it being like emotionally charged and overwhelming and amazing, but really overwhelming. And then when my little guy was about a month old, that tiny spark came back, that desire to create. And I was like, thank goodness, thank goodness. I started to feel my desire to create return. And I was so excited that my passions had expanded instead of shrunk. And I had this amazing little boy. And at the same time, I also still was so passionate about writing stories. <laughs> I started writing The Secret Shadow, which is the first book that I ever wrote after having a baby. <laughs> Before this, keep in mind, I had written seven novels, two nonfiction books, and published five of those total with my co-author, one children's book, and even some novel planner notebooks, and a collector's edition, and hardcovers. And yet this book right here still felt like a debut. <laughs> I had to figure out how to write all over again, and this time as a mom. More specifically, as a mom who was trying to figure out how to be a parent and how to navigate like absolutely no sleep, <laughs> dealing with crazy postpartum hormones and just body changes and just often in survival mode, to be honest. I did not think this was gonna make me cry, oh my gosh. <sighs> I started vlogging that process of writing that first draft. And now here I am a year and a half later publishing this book. I wanted to bring all these vlogs together in one video and watch them with you guys and also share how editing went after that first draft. And I thought it'd be fun because I honestly don't remember a lot of it to ask myself, how many writing days did it take to get that first draft done as a brand new mom? How did it feel? to be writing again. I don't remember. How much has this book changed from that first draft to what it is now? And oh my gosh, compare the word count of this huge beast to the little tiny first draft. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a huge difference. We'll find out together. I hope you enjoy this marathon video. I have never done a video this long before, but I think it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be an emotional one for me. So let's start with day one. about to write for the first time since Zion was born and I'm really nervous. <laughs> this is my first time writing with a baby and I'm like, why not vlog it and share how it really goes? I don't have high expectations, let's put it that way. But I do have some plans that I've been strategizing and coming up with over the last month-ish now. So let me walk you through it and what I'm gonna do. But first, let me pack my bag. <laughs> The first step in my master plan for writing a book with a baby is going to be leaving the house because I've done a little bit of other work, um, but nothing that's like <clears throat> focused work. Like I've done some video editing, but you can stop that at any minute and come back and it's actually kind of nice to have breaks. So if I need to go in like do the dishes or make a bottle or do some laundry and then come back and then go and check on him and then come back and, it's, it's not the same thing as when you're writing and you need to focus. So I knew that I would need some way to focus and the house is chaos. I just, I was like, I don't think I can work here. At least not like right away. It's just gonna add one more layer of it being difficult and I think it's already gonna be difficult. Let me get on the road. I'm gonna go to a coffee shop where I've been craving a drink from there since I stopped being able to have coffee during pregnancy and I'm really excited, but um, I will tell you the plan on the way. All right, so like I was saying, the first stage in my plan, like I said, is leaving the house. And the second stage is having a really like dedicated amount of time. So I talked to my husband, I'm like, what do you think about like just an hour and a half 
I'll feel guilty if I go out any longer. I'll probably feel guilty anyway. Does anybody else relate to that? Tell me if there's anybody else who has like mom guilt out there, but oh my gosh, I didn't think I'd have it and it's crazy. So when I'm at home, I constantly feel guilty and I'm like, okay, I think I need to actually be absent so then I can kind of remove some of that. So that led to the plan of an hour and a half and I've got sort of a plan for breaking it up with sprints. So I'm gonna start out with 10 to 15 minutes just to warm up. Usually that's like kind of a throwaway sprint, you know, take off the pressure, it's probably not gonna go well. In fact, it might just be in this case, outline. The whole day might be outlining and just re-familiarizing myself. Okay, I better take my turn. So anyway, then I'm going to take little breaks in between, track, I'm gonna track my word count just for the fun of it because I've always liked that and I like knowing how much I can write per sprint, but I'm not gonna take it super seriously and that's gonna lead to my third part of the plan, which is to track by time spent instead of by um, word because honestly I think <laughs> writing is a muscle right so think of it this way like I just got off of major surgery and before that I was definitely not working out at the end of pregnancy so I have like no muscles okay and if I try to go work out now which I kind of tried to yesterday and it was really pathetic I have to give myself grace because the muscles just aren't there. Like I need to build them up all over again, right? So same thing with writing. It's a writing muscle. I have to build it up. I have to be okay with the fact that I might write very little compared to what I usually write. And so that's why instead of trying to use my word count as a tracker for how well I'm doing, I'm going to use just time, time put in. That means I'm doing well. If I'm putting in the work, if I'm showing up, that's what counts. The fourth part of my plan was actually to get in the zone, which is a little harder to do when I'm leaving the house, honestly. But the idea, I'm thinking I was going to like light a candle, can't do that. <laughs> Not in a coffee shop. Um, but maybe there will be some coffee shop ambiance and maybe that can become my new zone. You know how you kind of, I've talked about this before, you train your brain. What are the signals that you're about to write? So I don't usually go sit in a coffee shop ever. So maybe that will be the new signal to my brain. That will be part of getting in the zone and being like, hey, it's time to write. Oh my gosh, the parking lot is super full. Shoot. Okay, first problem, my favorite coffee shop, the one that with the cozy atmosphere is absolutely packed. So now I'm trying to decide, do I go to a different coffee shop? Um, I'm gonna go scope it out, but this is not really what I want to be doing. This is like wasting my precious time and I only have so much time, ah! But the, the other one's just down the road, so I'm gonna go check it out real quick. It's just not the same atmosphere and comfy chairs, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, what's going on? You guys, it's Monday. I don't think I said this. Monday, January 31st. It's a Monday. How is there a line like it's Sunday, like it's the weekend? Um, I'm gonna have to pull into a car spot here, parking spot, and look at a map, try to find something. And let's hope that third time's the charm. Anyway, like I was saying, the last step in my master plan is to have stuff that gets me in the zone so that I'm able to immediately jump into writing because my brain is just prepped to write. And that is hopefully going to be the case with going to a coffee shop, having my um, playlist. I'm gonna pull up my Spotify playlist. There's a cafe. Okay, it has chairs out. So I'm gonna try Barnes & Noble. I was really hoping to have that one coffee drink, but that's okay. The goal is writing. Oh gosh, I really hope their cafe is open here.
right, I think that went pretty well. I actually did okay. I did a bullet point outline, which I think really helps me get started because there's a lot of freedom when you're just scratching out, scribbling things on paper. You're not really worrying about it being perfect because you're not in the Word document yet. You know what I mean? That is one of my little secret techniques to get moving without pressure. And so I just wrote down some like questions for myself, where I could go and what I needed to figure out. And brainstorming that way sort of leads me into ideas. And I had a fun one and I got started with it and I just kept going. I don't remember how many sprints I did, but I kept them short. I did 15 minute sprints, which also helped me because I was gonna do 20 to 25 minute sprints, but then you don't feel like you get as many done and you don't feel like you made as much progress. Instead, I did 15 minute sprints and I didn't really take a break between them, which helped me, you know, feel again like I was getting a lot done because I was utilizing my time like as much as I possibly could. There was one idea I had where I was wasting time and I was just sitting there trying to figure out like what I want it to be. I have this idea. I really like it. I want the character to be figuring out sort of this mystery. It's a long story but the point is that I didn't actually know what I wanted her to figure out. I just knew that I wanted it to parallel her story that she so that she could basically share her emotions with the reader as well as she's figuring out this other thing. But anyway, I didn't know what it was. So I ended up putting it in brackets, just like figure this out later. This is kind of what I want to go for. And then I decided to highlight that in yellow so that it really popped out so that if I have time when I'm at home, I can just kind of think about those scenes and maybe figure it out while I'm at home before my next writing session, but I don't have to. So that was my strategy there. And then since I know people are going to ask, I've done YouTube long enough that every single time I share a Word document looking like this people are like oh my gosh what is the writing app you're using and it's just word you guys but I do have some videos on it like this one about how I write in word and then this series about how I format my novels if you're curious I'll link both of those below and I'll put them at the end of this video so you can check them out but it was just a word doc and I was just zooming out so that you guys couldn't read it and my total word count today was 894 words which considering the fact that I don't really do well usually in public I have a hard time writing when there's other people around at all and distractions and considering that I haven't written in months I'm very thankful for that that was awesome for me it's also just a limit of creativity in a day anyway and I have to admit okay there's somebody right next to me awkward I'm gonna start driving somebody pulled in right next to me and that was awkward <laughs> oh what was I saying Oh, there's a limit to how much creativity you have in a day anyway, you know what I mean? Where I probably was hitting my wall anyway, so I don't even feel bad about calling it good and being done for the day. In all honesty, I might be using the same amount of, creat of creativity time, creative time. <laughs> as I did in the past, if you think about it, because in the past I probably had the same amount of creativity, I just was wasting time around it. And now, hopefully, I'm wasting as little time as possible, you know what I mean? It is now 11.53, so I am going to drive just across the street pretty much to grab lunch for us and head home. Super excited about where the story is going. I love it. I was actually, I forgot to tell you guys, I was considering writing Invisible Souls today, and I was trying to decide if I want to do that or Jezebel's book too but I was like you know Invisible Souls has a lot of world building that is super unclear I still don't know exactly what it needs to be versus Jezebel's story I just know it was really fun to write it gosh I'm excited about this story so if we're using the save the cat beats today I pretty much wrote the opening image and then I even had a chance to kind of go back and edit through and flesh it out more so that was really fun I do think it still needs more like it's it hasn't been like I think I only wrote like half of this scene but I really like what I have so far and now I get to brainstorm and think on what will come next I'm excited because I can do that while I'm doing other things and then hopefully come back strong next time. It is Thursday, February 3rd. Let me set you on something so we can chat. It's 5.30 so it's a lot later than the last time I wrote but I tend to be an evening writer so I'm hoping that'll be beneficial. <laughs> it's also been four days so I'm like I need to get on it. The last time I wrote was Monday and I'm already kind of forgetting what I wrote. <laughs> oh my gosh, how am I more nervous than last time? I just, I don't know. I think my mind is like, last time you got lucky, this time is not gonna go so well. But you can't go into it with that mindset or it'll happen. So anyway, I need to have good expectations. Um, I'm hoping to continue the opening image. I think the biggest thing is, do I go back and do I flesh out the things where I had those highlighted spots? Or do I just keep moving forward? I mean, unless it's going to affect things in the future, obviously, then I need to figure it out. But otherwise, I'm thinking, keep moving forward. I tend to do very 
um, underwritten first drafts anyway, and then I just fill it in later, so it's not a big deal. In fact, the shorter this draft, the sooner it's finished and I can move on to editing technically. So I think I'm gonna try that coffee shop that I told you guys about in the last vlog and see if it's less busy at night. And then after I'm finished writing, I'm gonna go to Target and buy some really cute little baby clothes because Zion is already moving into the next stage and he needs bigger clothes, so. It'll be fun. I'm sort of using that as my reward and uh, maybe a chocolate drink. You never know. <sighs> I think going out like this might not be feasible. I might need to learn to work at home, but at least having the distance for this starting period, uh, the kicking off point, you know, <laughs> getting things moving again, it'll be helpful. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, I just need to stop procrastinating and go do it. So I'm gonna go pack my bag, get on the road. <laughs> Stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away. Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. like me a little bit scared of heights why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside it really makes me wonder I'm so bummed. Caribou closes at seven. It's seven right now, so I had to leave. So I didn't get to write as much as I wanted to, which is okay, that's okay. Um, I only got like 400 something words. I, did, I don't even remember, because I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta go. They're closing, but I got the yummy drink, the amazing ambiance. Isn't that the prettiest place ever? I love the fireplace, and it it's just so cozy. Caribous are the better chain than Starbucks. That's just my opinion. <laughs> If you don't have caribous, they are a Midwest thing, but they're like a big thing around here. There's one on every corner, just as much as Starbucks. So that's all the writing time I'm gonna have today, but that's okay. This is what I'm learning is just grab the time when you can, right? Let me know, moms, everywhere. That's what we do, right? Is we just find time when we can. So I need to not be so picky about having to go somewhere. I think I'm gonna have to figure out how to work at home as well so that I can have more time and I don't have to suddenly leave in the middle of a good spot in the story because I was having a hard time getting in the zone and then I finally figured out what I wanted to write and I had to go. Anyway, not to complain, this is just the learning curve and I'm figuring it out. So I'll see you next time. Okay, it's February 4th today and I'm working from home because I'm trying to do multiple things. So I didn't want to waste a second time driving. Um, I'm using my little timer here. It's about to come off. So I'm just doing a few 10 minute sprints where I'm editing my videos and then I want to switch over to writing and see what I can get done today. 10 more minutes working and then I'm gonna get into writing and I'm nervous. <sighs> Cause it's not a lot of time, but we're gonna try. I'm using my words sprint tracker. Technically, I just wrote 408 words, but they aren't story words. So let me give you a sneak peek here. Everything that's highlighted there is what I just added. The trick is though, is that I was doing my bullet point thing. So I did it first in the notebook and then I flesh it out more here. So I feel like I know exactly what I want to happen in the scene, like beat by beat by beat, but it's not written pretty. It's not written in a storytelling way yet. So now I'm curious how long it'll take me to basically, it's almost like I wrote a fast draft 
really, really, really rough draft. And now I'm gonna go and write it and it's basically, I'm almost editing already, if that makes sense. I'm gonna count it, it's 380, no, what did I say? 408 words, even though technically I'm now gonna go rewrite them so I can't count it towards my total for the day. But I'm writing in the sprint trackers here. Okay, let's see how far I can get. I think I only have like two more 10 minute sprints, so wish me luck. I am finished up for the day. Check out all that highlighted stuff. Oh my gosh, I love this strategy. So I did the bullet point thing that you saw there and then I just basically rewrote it and it was so, so much faster. I'm so excited. I think I just finished the chapter. I just need to fill in one thing that I couldn't think of that's going to be important. So I have to think of it before I keep writing, but I finished the chapter. So I wrote for 50 minutes, 990 words and the whole chapter, let's see how long it is so far. The whole chapter is about 2,400 words. I finished chapter one. That's it for today. I need to call it and get back to little baby, but I'm very excited. That was three days of writing this week, about 20, 400 words. Not bad. Not bad at all. Back with another writing vlog. Today is Friday, February 11th. <laughs> I haven't written in over a week because last Friday, right pretty much after the last vlog ended, we got very sick and I still sound sick, but I actually feel a million times better. It was rough. Being sick with a baby and trying not to let your baby get sick, it's been a rough week, you guys. And so, yeah, I didn't write anything, but today we're back. If you missed the last two vlogs, I've shared some of the things that have been helping me to write quickly and they've been working really well. The problem is though, I am stuck. <laughs> As of today, I need to brainstorm something and until I figure out the answers, I can't really move forward. Let's see if I can explain it. I need Jezebel to, <laughs> how do I tell you guys this? I need her to overhear something that happens about a specific person. <laughs> it's gonna kick off the story. It's a plot twisty thing. We need it to happen, okay? But you can't just have other characters come in just for the sake of your story and just like force it. They need to actually have a reason. So it's not as simple as it seems. Like I need to figure out what this person is doing, but to figure that out, I need to know why they would even do it. And to figure that out, I need to know why they would be there in the first place. <laughs> because this character, every character, really, if you're doing your story well, and this is something I heard once, I don't remember where, but every character is the hero of their own story. And so they need to have their own motivations, their own goals. They can't just show up somewhere because it works for your main character. You know what I mean? But anyway, all that to say, I need to figure this person out and what they want and why they're there before I can move forward. And oh, I've been thinking about it, but not that hard. So now I actually have to face the problem. That probably sounded like a crazy riddle, but trust me, once you read the story, you'll be like, oh, I get it. I see it. I see it now. Um, so anyway, I've been procrastinating and I'm going to procrastinate just a little bit longer and I'm going to um, clean up my messy desk before we start. <laughs> Okay, I think I have it. Are you ready? I've got some notes here. I had to figure out, I kind of worked my way backwards from the why is this person there in the first place? Once I figured that out, I was like, okay, so why are they doing this specific thing that they're doing? Once I figured that out, I was like, okay, so then what exactly is it? And then on this next page, I did my bullet point strategy. Ugh, my voice is not back yet. So I think I have a plan. Let's go. Okay, I forgot to set a timer, but I actually didn't outline. I just started writing it because I was like, okay, I see a few things. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to set an actual timer so that I can stay on track. I've got 30 minutes left. <laughs> Where did the time go? Where did it go? Oh my god. Funny enough, this is still 
in the end of chapter one. So chapter one's gonna be fuller and more fleshed out, which is good. I feel like I'm editing more than drafting right now because I'm coming back into the end of chapter one and I'm fleshing it out more basically. I'm realizing that there, it needed a lot more than I thought. I had what I thought was gonna be like two lines and it's gonna be like two pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually start using my timer to keep myself focused because I'm already getting behind. But the thing that I'm adding is good. It's gonna be good. I am excited about it. I feel like I had a breakthrough. Jumping from cliffs so high. This is the hard part about working from home. I can hear Molson and Penny playing ball. I just took like a 40 minute break to go help with Zion and then eat dinner. And now I can hear them playing ball and I can hear him crying. <sighs> I can hear Penny outside the door. I got another 30 minutes and then I have to be done for the day because we got a lot of things we have to do. So here we go. If I let figure out where the road goes. I'm gonna zoom way out so that you can't see too much here. Basically I wrote this little chunk and then this chunk and then <laughs> this chunk right here and then I wrote all of this right here and then I was like halfway through I'm like no actually that doesn't belong in this chapter that belongs in chapter two so I had to kind of rework it and then I started bullet pointing this section right here and I was like that's coming from the notebook which I know like generally what I want to do so I was kind of fleshing it out in here but I can't count this the, as the words for today I can only count you know those chunks so let's add it up and see what it is this background is is from the Stolen Kingdom before I even knew the name. I gotta update both of my backgrounds. 85 words in chapter one plus 288 in chapter two, not counting all that bullet point stuff. I've only written 373 and I can hear Zion crying. So I'm done for the day. We'll check back in tomorrow. Today is February 12th and it's just occurred to me after having edited the first two vlogs already that I haven't really explained this concept that well so hopefully it's come across clear but this is my first time writing a book with a new baby. Obviously not with the baby, I hope that's come through. <laughs> I did consider putting him in my Moby wrap, I just haven't totally gotten a handle on it and it's also very unpredictable. if he'll stay asleep, you know? So I prefer to take like an hour and a half where I just step away and I talked to Mosin about not interrupting because like it's fine to be interrupted with some things but not with writing. It's very hard to just stay in the zone in general. Like I'm always tempted to grab my phone so I didn't bring my phone in here either today. And I'm just, I'm a little bit, just a little bit unsure how this is gonna go because I had such a good sprint followed by such a bad one and so it's kind of a toss up right now. I haven't drafted anything since, what is it, May I think is when I wrote the last book and it's just been a really long time and now it's February so it'll be okay. It'll be fine. I've got my sweet little writing buddy with me today. Hey Penny, can you say hi to everybody? So we are going to get focused. I just, blah, I just need to get focused. So let me just talk it out with you guys for a minute. Also going to plug in my main monitor here so that I can have my ergonomics. There, let me just set up. Now I got the Word document there and I'm just going to use my keyboard. I do have my Apple keyboard here. I just never use it. I could use this today to have even better ergonomics. Set that up quick. The problem is though with this is I didn't buy a mouse and I still have to like move around in the scene. So sometimes I feel like it's just easier to do my Mac as if it's the keyboard. We're gonna try this. I wanna show why this specific thing that happened matters to Jezebel because if it doesn't matter to her, then the reader's not gonna care either. So we need to show how is it impacting her and it's gonna lead to like an impossible choice where she has basically two painful options, I guess you could say. It's like option one, I don't wanna tell you. <laughs> or option two, which is even worse, but it seems like it's less pain up front. Sometimes this is called the stupid choice, actually, I think. I think I've heard it called the stupid choice, or maybe that's later on. And in this book, the Save the Cat Rights novel, you guys hear me talk about this all the time. I think we would call this the catalyst. Why am I forgetting? Yeah, the catalyst. Or no, technically it's the debate. I just wrote the catalyst. Okay, so we're in the debate, basically. And that means that we're trying to set it up to show the impossible choice, as some people call it, where it's like, like, do we go this way or that way? Neither of them is that great. And then we show them picking one. So they're debating about it. Since I have this open, why don't I refresh for a minute? This is happening really fast to be 
in chapter two to be in the catalyst. So I think I'm gonna obviously be a fast drafter and need to flesh the story out more in the editing stage. But for right now, the catalyst is happening in chapter two. All right, enough talk. I'm not in the right headspace. So I'm gonna put on some Spotify music, try to get in the right headspace, and I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> crying. I just gotta check in because I'm not doing what I said I was gonna do. So I'm in here. I wrote something in here and I was like, oh shoot, this is gonna cause a plot hole. So I had to go back. <laughs> I've got 10 minutes left now. And I had to go find the plot hole spot wherever it was. And then I was like, okay, how am I gonna rewrite this? And so I thought of a new way to write it. So I had to do that. And then that made me go forward and I had to flesh out this chapter more. I hear him coming. Hello. <laughs> you know I'm recording, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, do you need something? I was just gonna finish this vlog. Clearly I'm done now. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna post that. I am going to share that. That was too funny not to share. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi. Family photo. Your heads are cut off. <laughs> I'm pretty much done. I'm just gonna call it. Hold on. I'm calling it, obviously. How much should I do here? Let's pull up my word count stickers, even though, like I said, I basically was editing the whole time. That's what I was trying to get at. I was going in here and then in here and fixing this and fixing that. So did I add any words? Let's see. 728. Got my little tracker here. So I'm gonna put that on Saturday the 12th. I've only written, as you can see here, two days this week. And what did I write for? Probably like 60 minutes. I am trying to track to see how long it takes with the baby and if it takes me longer to write a book or less time. Honestly, I've never fully tracked my time before, but oh, I hear him crying. I need to go help. Um, Anyway, it's the cranky time and I, I need to write either earlier in the day or I just need to not be in the house. Like this isn't working very well, but I did get stuff done. That's what counts. <laughs> oh, and I was gonna say, I wrote a really fun ending for chapter two. Honestly, it's a really fun cliffhanger and chapter one has a fun cliffhanger, but technically it could be all bundled together as chapter one. It's one of those things where you don't have to decide when you're drafting. I just like to split it up and have shorter chapters. Makes you feel like you're getting somewhere. Honestly, I feel like so far this vlog, I've just felt really stuck. I still don't know what this next part's gonna be and what she's gonna do next. So I guess it's good to be done for the day and I'll brainstorm it and hopefully have something when I come back next time. Who's my cute girl? Hi guys, it's Monday. It's officially Monday. It's actually Valentine's Day, January, January, February 14th today. The reason I'm feeling stuck is probably because it's been three months since I outlined this story. I think I did a vlog about it and I loved the outline, but do I remember it? Partially, kind of. So I've been referring back to it, but what I'm thinking is I need to just go through and put all of this in my Word document and do my bullet point thing throughout the whole document and then I can flesh it out as I go. Then I have it fresh in my head. You know what I mean? I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're stuck, I feel like there's two things you gotta do. You have to first figure out why you're stuck because there are different reasons. For me, I knew that it was partially because I couldn't remember where I was going. So that's why I wanna do this. I'm not necessarily re-outlining stuff because I have typed up my outline, but it's more that I need to write it in for my own refresher and I might as well write it into the Word doc. It's going to make Word 
word count tracking more tricky because, well, obvious reasons, as I go through and I write the actual scene, I'm gonna delete it in the outline. So it's gonna be like adding words and then deleting words and then adding and deleting. And it could get messy, but word count's not as important as being able to write the dang book. <laughs> and so what was the second thing that I was gonna say? Oh, the second thing for getting unstuck, I think honestly is brainstorming and taking the time to think it through, which is something I tend to just be like, ah, I'm stuck, but I don't do anything about it. After I write all this up, I'm then going to brainstorm and flesh it out more, like the whole thing maybe, maybe just the beginning, I don't know. And we'll see how far I get in an hour and a half or at this point, less than that. <laughs> Basically what I'm trying to say is I probably won't actually write much story today, but I know that this is important. So it's not wasted time. We need to do it for the writing to go well next time. Enough procrastinating. I always do this when I'm stuck. <laughs> Let's go. Also, I think I'm going to try using my happy light. This is not sponsored at all. I just, I got this years ago and it helps with, especially in Minnesota winters where everybody has seasonal depression on top of like normal depression and issues like that. So this kind of works like coffee sort of where it gives you energy. It's like getting vitamin D. I don't know. Again, not sponsored. I don't even remember at this point. I just remember that it works. And since it's early enough in the day, I've done this at night and then I can't sleep. It's early enough in the day that I'm going to use it. And speaking of coffee, my favorite drink is starting next week. I am going to try to be more healthy. I'm going to try to make some lifestyle changes to lose the baby weight and yet just feel better about myself. So I'm going to enjoy this while I can. Um, if you guys want to know more about that, let me know because I kind of want to do research on things that help specifically with hormones and like kind of resetting your hormones. Like I've read about how things like cinnamon and avocado are really good for women. It kind of helps you reset and actually lose weight faster, believe it or not. I'm going to be doing a lot of research on that and obviously just doing the stuff that works, that, that takes a long time, but it works, which is eating better, fueling my body better, and actually being active. It's a very good lifestyle change, but not today. I'm so tempted to work on YouTube videos right now. I'm gonna shut it down. Let's do this. But I rose up from the ground, just like I was profound. All the odds were against me. So I picked up the page. Just finished outlining. Ooh, wow. Let me show you. 7,381 words. I was at like 4,682, so my total just outlining words was 2,699. And yes, I am going to count that. I'm going to count that as my word count for the day, but it's not actually counting towards my total word count for the novel. Let's see how many pages this was. I'm gonna zoom way out so you guys can't read it. And just keep in mind, I write in a template. I've said this before, but like, I basically just have the back matter in here from other books and the front matter, this this is the first book's title page and all that jazz and copyright. So today we did, let's see, chapter three here was the old outline that I did. So starting at chapter four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hold on, 14, 15, 16 pages. Maybe I might spend my last like 10 minutes here separating this into these chapters because I set up some, you know, temporary chapter headers here. So yeah, I think I'll do that and then if I have any time left I might go and try to flesh out the chapter three outline a little bit more now that I remember the whole story. There you go. I have now separated everything into chapters. This is where the outline begins. There's chapter four with an outline. Chapter five, let's see, six has a longer outline. That's probably going to be more than one chapter. Seven, eight might be split into two. Nine might be split into two or three. Ten is like the longest one and that's probably going to be more like two or three or four chapters. But that way it's sort of split up and I can get a sense of where I am in the story. It's based on beats. So like game changing midpoint, post midpoint where the bad guys start closing in. Um, what does this one say? I can't read it. Disaster or the dark night of the soul kind of moment. And this is where in theory the five point finale begins. And then I split it up where this is like the high tower surprise. If you follow the Save the Cat Writes a Novel beats, you'll know what I'm talking about here. But that's just kind of the gist of it. And this definitely needs to be split up into probably like five different chapters. Everything you're looking at here, the only stuff that's actually written is from here through here. So 
this to this and the rest is outline or front and back matter which if you guys have ever heard me talk about this before in my formatting series writing in a template like this just helps me feel like it's a real book because I mean look it's got a title page and it's got all this other good stuff in my author bio but it does mean that there's many many more words here than the actual story so anyway that is how far I got today now I literally have like three minutes left but I'm gonna go into here and in case you guys are curious I just go to the view tab and then I add this navigation pane on the side and I go to the bullet point one here so that I can kind of I've kind of hacked my way into it looking like Scrivener as I write because now that I've put things into this outline format I can easily jump around here's my front and back matter but then I want to jump to chapter three where I'm currently at and I'm giving you a little sneak peek here of where I started and I'm gonna try to flesh this out more I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out to show you whoa I zoomed out way too far I'm gonna spend my last two minutes now trying to figure out what I'm gonna write next Next time. There, done. I think I added another page, maybe a page and a half here. And my total is now 29.39. Or let's see, here we are, Monday. Oh my gosh, my writing is so sloppy when I'm using the camera. So that's me hopefully getting unstuck. Let me know if you think this is a good strategy or not. I guess we'll find out in the next vlog. baby sleeping so I've got my bag packed and we are gonna go to I think a coffee shop again I was considering going to the library or someplace more quiet but I think we're gonna start our diet next week I don't think I should be going to coffee shops at that point because it'll be too tempting to get like a really yummy drink I think this is gonna be the last week that I go to a coffee shop for a while so we should make the most of it right Penny you're not used to mama vlogging anymore you're like what are you doing what are you doing honey? I should probably say that this whole diet thing is like not exciting. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I have really bad self-control, you guys. Sorry, I'll try to keep my crazy coat to a minimum. But speaking of, I can finally fit in my normal winter coat because I had to borrow a friend's winter coat for the pregnancy that has like an extra like middle section you can zip in. <laughs> for the belly and I have only just now finally been able to fit back in my normal coat so this is just my personal journey everybody has their own way of doing things but when you sit in a desk every day all day long it's not super healthy and I know I need to be more active and I also just want to eat more healthy because I know that the fuel you put in your body is literally fuel and there's a reason that I feel crummy sometimes <laughs> like yesterday and again this is just my personal story but I actually wanted to start losing weight back in March and actually Actually, right when we found out we were pregnant, I had been trying to get serious about being more healthy and losing weight. And then I was like, oh crap, <laughs> not crap. Obviously very exciting, but also weight gain was a uh, non-negotiable. I wasn't super well behaved during pregnancy. I didn't like watch weight gain at all because sometimes you just gotta live. <laughs> but now I wanna get back to a healthy place, which honest to goodness, is gonna mean about 50 pounds lost in, anyway. That was a tangent. Let's get on the road and get to the writing shop. I mean, coffee shop. The writing shop. It could be. It could be. Somebody should make one of those. Just saying. It is above zero today, you guys. Oh, sorry, make that two degrees. And let me just show you. This is Minnesota. For those of you who don't know what it's like here, it's just a little bit of snow. Like, this is just how we roll. It's like taller than the car. Snowflakes are coming down Collapse into water when they hit the ground I hear the sound of empty streets and Yesterday has gone to sleep So all that's left is you and me I can promise you're the only thing I see I was thinking that didn't go well and then at the end I wrote it down and I was like wait a minute I just wrote a thousand one hundred and fifty words in an hour that's pretty good that's pretty dang good I 
I don't think I used to write that fast. I should be happy with that, but like I said, it felt slow. I was struggling to focus. Oh my gosh, my attention span needs work. Like I said, writing is definitely a muscle and I am out of shape. And so I just kept finding myself wanting to, you know, click on the internet and go do something. And I did. In the middle, I actually applied to a book club feature deal, if you know what that is then you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, I do have a video on it. You know, I always have videos on things. I will link that below if you're curious, but I just, I really wanted to procrastinate. I wanted to edit videos because I actually have the second vlog in this series coming out tomorrow, but that's the last video that I've edited. And so then I will be caught up and I've been trying to stay ahead so that I can always just have fun publishing when I'm ready on my timetable. But now I've got two or three videos that I recorded. It's easy to record them. It's the editing that takes forever. So anyway, back to how it went today. The ergonomics, unfortunately, were not good. I have been sitting at home at my kitchen table and you know how you're supposed to have your arms like level at 90 degree angles from your body? And so at home, my arms are just slightly higher and I felt like a pinching in my shoulders and unfortunately the tables in there are almost the exact same height. So it just wasn't comfortable. I think I'm gonna try somewhere else next time. And people were definitely looking at me when I was vlogging. Awkward! <laughs> so I didn't vlog a whole lot, uh, but I sat in the corner that I thought would be really quiet and then after I'd sat down and unpacked I was like oh I'm right next to the bathrooms so this is gonna be distracting so like I said I was working with the outline which obviously helped more than I realized and I still got more done than I expected but I did delete 366 words and then I wrote a total of 1150 words so I think right now with the outline I'm at roughly 8405 words without it probably more like 5,000 which is not bad, actually. That's exciting. But I am so happy with how today went. This was just a really, really good writing day. Good day all around. Got a lot done. I still want to do so much more, though. So probably going to be how it is when you're writing with a baby. It's just life, right? Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Mm, good girl. All right, baby is sleeping. So we thought we'd come chat for a minute because it's been a week since I wrote. Today is the 24th and the last time I wrote was last Thursday. <laughs> That's frustrating. <clears throat> and I feel like if I wasn't doing these videos, I'd probably go even further, but I have had it in the back of my mind, like I should be writing, I should be writing. And last night I finally had a revelation for what I needed and I was like, oh my gosh, I've been trying to cram just so much work into this tiny little, you know, hour and a half, half hour here, 20 minutes there. And just, it's, it's like writing just became almost frantic trying to get it done, you know, within this time span. And so, it's not as enjoyable. And then on top of that, I always had, you know, so many other things that I needed to do. It just kind of hit me last night when I was getting frustrated that I hadn't written in so long and that I didn't really want to, which is the most frustrating part because it's supposed to be my fun me time and it has been fun and I've been enjoying creating, but it all boils down to really one thing, which is self-care. <laughs> I know that's a buzzy word, but this week's been a little tough because first of all, we started the diet on Monday. And just to clarify, because I didn't say this before, we are doing a 21 day reset, something that Mosin's friend uh, recommended. And it's exactly what it sounds. It's not just like weight loss, although that would be awesome because I need that. And I know there's lots of mixed feelings about diets and everybody has a different opinion. All I know is that I like the idea of resetting my metabolism, resetting my hormones, just overall feeling better, getting my energy back. And I think that 21 days should not be that hard. <laughs> it is though, it's really hard. We're on, this is day four and I'm starting to feel better. I felt so foggy, like my head was just in the clouds the first few days. It's not fun, I'm not good at it. I really, really hate it. You're looking at a girl who loves her chocolate, okay? I love it but it's technically self-care and so is me starting to try to exercise again even though that's really just like walking but just movement trying to kind of heal my body after the c-section just feel better i think it was when i had this thought where i was like i just wish i could take the day to read a book and i was like wait why can't i i mean yes i have a baby 
but he sleeps a lot and he's a really sweet kiddo. And I definitely have time to read a book. It just means not doing the other things. And so really my revelation was like, I need to prioritize some self care. And if that means taking a day off, ignoring the writing and reading a book, that's what I need to do. I hope I'm explaining this well. I think the reason that I was burning out was basically I was working every single day because I thought I got to cram it in and get things done when I have time. But that kind of pace it does make you feel burnt out really fast. You know what I mean? As much as I probably should be writing because it helps to write more continuous in a row so you remember what you were writing. I just really needed some time off to do other things. So yesterday I caught up on a bunch of emails, a bunch of to-dos on my taxes. I have some videos to catch up on so I was editing those. This video should be titled The One with Tons of Self-Care because the new mama realized she still needs to take care of herself but that title's a little bit too long, so. <laughs> but that's essentially what it is. I realized that because I have less time, I am gonna have to move at a slower pace and that's okay. Like I knew that, right? I knew that. I guess I didn't realize that was because my limited time would also need to be divided amongst other things like just getting laundry done and eating good food and exercising, which I really want to continue doing and be healthy. And then, you know, the miscellaneous annoying parts of the business that didn't go away. I have been rambling for, it looks like nine minutes now, and I don't know if I've made any sense. So I hope that this is coming through well. Let me know in the comments if you understand what I'm trying to say. But basically, if I were to sum it up, it would be that sometimes self-care means writing and sometimes not writing. <laughs> This is pretty much the summary. If I'm being honest with you, I don't think I'm gonna write today and I'm trying not to feel guilty about that. <laughs> it's Saturday, February 26th, 9.40 in the morning and Mohsen just left to bring Zion to his parents' house so that I could work and I know that I should work, but I just, like I said in the last, whenever I was last talking to you guys, I was talking about how I just feel burnt out and so I actually listened to this book right here. Dear Writer, Are You in Burnout? If you remember, I was listening to that book called Dear Writer, maybe, some, what is it called? Maybe You Need to Quit. Something about quitting. <laughs> and I had seen that the same author did this book. So during, you know, the late night feedings with Zion, I started listening to that and I was like, wow, this is eye-opening. The first thing she talks about is how you could think of your energy like pennies and how you only have so many to spend per day. And so if you're spending them on all these other little things, like what what am I gonna eat and then what am I gonna wear and should I do this and okay willpower let's not go on social media stuff like that you spend quite a bit and by the time you get to doing something creative you can almost be so low that you don't have enough left and I was like oh my gosh that makes so much sense because all of a sudden I've got all these pennies that I used to just have you know ready to use on creativity that are now going to you know taking care of Zion making sure he's fed figuring out what he needs checking his diaper you know burping him hanging out with him, doing tummy time. Good things that I am very happy to be doing, don't get me wrong. But it makes sense now that I've been spending, you know, pennies or my energy on that and then I just don't have always enough left. It's as simple as that. So that made me feel a lot better. And then she went on to the next like metaphor, I guess you could call it, which was plate size and how not everybody has the same plate size. So you might have like a small plate or a big plate and depending on how big your plate is, that's how much you can manage. And I was like, okay, so the same thing applies. I might have a plate that's like, you know, this big, but before I could use that whole plate pretty much for creativity, maybe like a tiny bit for getting the house clean and seeing people but for the most part I filled it up with work right and now it's filled up with taking care of Zion which again is awesome so I just needed to have that revelation that my energy is going to him and my time is going to him which like duh I know I know it's so obvious but I still thought I could somehow have the same energy when it comes to writing and I just don't think I always can so just taking the weight off and being okay with that feels really good <laughs> so I don't know I hope that encourages somebody out there that you know if you're like me and you just are giving a lot of yourself to other things like maybe you're in school or maybe you're working full-time on another job or maybe you have two jobs you know like we have to realize that we only have so much energy or pennies in a day and if we're spending it in other places burnout happens when you try to spend more than you have pretty much I'm paraphrasing all right let's see where we are so I'm gonna try not to be embarrassed by this calendar because it is Saturday so we are right here 
And my goal, as you can see at the bottom here, was to write three times a week. So I managed that the first week, but then it was down to two times a week after that. And this week is going to be once a week. But again, my goal is to be okay with that and just remember that progress is progress, even if it's not at the same speed as I usually go. How can I go at the same speed as I usually go when my life has changed so much? Again, I just need to keep repeating that to myself until it sinks in. <laughs> so yesterday I was reading through the last little bit that I had written, trying to psych myself up to write, and I still didn't have the energy, but I did get excited about the story and I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be really fun to write once I just like have the energy to do it again. And so let me be honest with you, I don't totally feel like I do, but I also feel like if I have two hours right now all to myself, I cannot waste that. So I'm going to give it a shot. What I told myself is I'm going to just try for the first hour. If I just want to be done after that and I'm tired, then I'll use the second hour or 45 minutes, whatever is left to read a book and not feel bad about it. Oh, speaking of, that reminds me that she said, you know, some things give you pennies or energy as well. So obviously like sleeping and eating well give you pennies or energy. So if you're having fun and doing something you like, then that could start to give you energy as well. And it could actually be filling the well instead of draining it. You know what I mean? But if it doesn't, and if it is draining my energy, then reading a book will definitely give me some pennies. <laughs> my desk is chaos again. I gotta clean this up. got my Spotify pulled up. I'm gonna make this bigger so you can see it. This is my Spotify playlist and got quite a few songs on here. For those of you asking, this is on a hidden page on my website right now. Everybody who gets the collector's edition, there's a link in the back, but so far I haven't opened it up to the public just yet, but it's this hidden page right here. So it has a bunch of stuff like a frequently asked questions and then there is my Spotify playlist along with a bunch of other fun stuff like a Gideon short story download and merch for the story and so on. So yeah, that's in the back of the collector's edition. If you have it, definitely go check it out. Eventually I think I will, but that's for another day. Quiet voices in the night. Time is running out of sight. Lonely wind is passing by. Tries to carry all the whispers that it finds The walls are listening when we talk I finished chapter three. Let me show you. All right, I've got it zoomed out so you can read the story, obviously, but I just highlighted what I wrote. It looks like it says, I don't know if you can read this, 984 words out of 9,233. Again, keep in mind that everything from here on is outline, so that's not the whole story. Let's see what we actually have for the whole story. Okay, that is through chapter one. Let's see, we have officially crossed 5,000 words, 5,334. Sorry that it's blurry, guys. I can't get it to focus. But yeah, that's what I have. And it is officially 1045. What time did I start? Gosh, was it 9.30? How do I not remember? Oh my gosh. Let me look at the footage. 9.39. Okay, I just watched back the footage, 9.39 a.m., so almost exactly an hour. No, about 70 minutes. Okay, and I wrote 984 words. I could keep writing, but honestly, I am tired. Like, I love what I wrote, but I don't wanna start writing crap just because I'm getting tired. So I'm gonna call it good and go read a book. I want to try something new this week where I write in the mornings before I get up for the day. I think it'll work because right now I take the night shift for feedings and diaperings and all that and then Mohsen does the morning shift and I've been sleeping in. So in theory I just wake up a little earlier, right? We tried switching by the way and he did nights and I did mornings and we both hated it. I'm, I'm a night owl so I'm not totally sure this is gonna work. It might be really hard to wake up. What the heck? Okay, we're just gonna go with it. Um, what I'm thinking is I am going to plan ahead and the night before I'm gonna bring in this backrest thing that we got for Zion's room. I'm gonna bring that into our room and then I gotta bring my laptop obviously and my earbuds and this really cheap lap desk that I used to use all the time that's falling apart 
bring that in the night before as well. That way I am all prepped to write first thing and just see how it goes. I might be super hungry. It might not be manageable. We'll find out together. Today is Monday, February 28th. And so I figured I'd start tomorrow, March 1st. So let's see how it's going so far. Here is the month of February. I'll give you a close up. Looks like I have only written eight times. Now we're gonna go to a new calendar for March. And I had made this before I remembered that I would need to do word count tracking on the side as well. So I was like, you know what? Let's just make my own separate word count tracker. And you guys know I get Mandy Lynn stickers all the time. I have them linked below. So I also did this weekly spread here. So our total, are you ready for this? Is a total of 8,500. 542 words written and then a total of eight hours and 25 minutes. So that's how much I've gotten done so far. Going into March, I'm like, oh, I want it to be better. I want to write more. But then I'm like, excuse me, Bethany, remember you were on maternity leave. It's okay if you just do this less. The fact that you're doing it all is awesome. So I'm trying to remember that and to remember what I told you guys in the last vlog, which was just like, again, I have less space on my plate to dedicate to this. And that means I'm going to do it less and I need to just be okay with that. And it's fine. This is driving me crazy. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you here because I'm assuming when I wake up tomorrow, I am not going to be up for like having a camera in my face. So instead of like vlogging it as I go, I will update you each day when I'm done. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I hope that this plan turns out to be amazing. But I guess you and I will find out together. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Okay, it's March 1st. I had a bad night last night because first, Zion wouldn't go to sleep. So instead of being asleep by like 9, 9.30 like he usually is, like so awesome, he decided to be cranky and stayed up till 10.30, which isn't bad, but it was an hour <laughs> later than I planned. And then he slept till four, but he decided again, he didn't want to go back to sleep. And I'm like, dude, you gotta go back to sleep. We are not doing this middle of the night thing. So long story short, I was gonna get up two hours early and write for two hours. No, <laughs> I got up a half an hour early and I was like, okay, drag myself out of bed. I can do this. I don't know how much I'm gonna get done, but oh my gosh, I was so excited. I was so in the zone. And the thing is, when I sat down to write, I had this huge plot hole that I was like, oh crap, this is the thing in outlining that I could not figure out. And I just left it in placeholders, like figure out later. And I was like, I'm here now. I have, this is later. I have to figure it out. I came up with something really exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. And so anyway, long story short, I wrote, let's check here, for 30 minutes, five 513 words and okay yes the document has a lot of outline but it did cross 10,000 words today so there you go that's how much I got done the first day of writing in the morning I loved it I just wish I'd have more time and like it was a choice between do I sleep and get the sleep that I need because I get really really cranky when I don't get enough sleep or do I write kind of like picked both a little bit Oh my gosh, I just left off at such an interesting place that now I actually want to write more, but that's good. They say that you should finish your writing with something you know what you want to write next, and for once, I could say that's absolutely true. I know exactly what I want to write. I did a little bullet point outline, as I like to say, and kind of described what I want to come next so that next time that I write, I won't forget. Dang, the creativity in the morning is strong. I really like it. I just need to get enough sleep. Here's hoping tomorrow, or tonight, will go really smooth and I'll get tons of sleep and I'll take the full two hours. Oh, I can't wait. I almost forgot to say I decided to use this chair instead. I wasn't going to because whenever I open this, Penny comes roaring in to see what's going on. She thinks it's a toy. So I just didn't open it and it was super comfy. So yeah, just gonna right there. I don't know if you can hear him, but Zion is talking to his dad and telling him a whole story. I can hear him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Where's my phone? It's Wednesday, March 2nd, and today I have very exciting news. I guess you could say I have good news and bad news. Good news is it went really well. Bad news is I'm exhausted. I, I think I have bags under my eyes. It was another rough night. Zion usually is an amazing sleeper, and the two nights that I've tried to wake up early and have a little less sleep, he's like, sure, let's do the less sleep thing. Let's just all around less sleep. So yeah, <laughs> went to bed a little bit late. And again, he was 
is like longer to put to bed. Usually he's really quick in the middle of the night. So I did change my alarm. I had it set for seven and I pushed it back, I think half an hour and then I pressed snooze. So I was up by like 7.40 and then I had to get ready to go meet a friend. So I had only 50 minutes to write, but somehow <laughs> I was so excited about the story that I managed to write 1,060 words. Oh my gosh, I think mornings, first of all, so much more creative. There's less guilt because I haven't like gone out to see him. So I don't feel like, oh my gosh, I should be helping with this or that. It's just all around been working really well, except the being really tired. I think the other really fun thing is that I've been going to sleep thinking about the story. So it's been like in my head, almost like simmering in my sleep. And I just, I feel like I'm just more creative. Like I was actually coming up with what I wanted to do last night. I came up with like, four ideas. I was like, oh, I could do this and I could add this in and don't forget to do this and don't forget to do that. And I was like so excited to write it this morning because I feel like technically I did some brainstorming last night while I was trying to fall asleep. The downside there is that of course I probably would have fallen asleep sooner if I wasn't busy thinking about my story. I'm really excited because I finished chapter four and I'm just super excited about the plot twisty thing that just happened. I feel like I'm finding out about the story as I go. Like I kind of know where I'm going, but I'm finding out a lot about it. And it's almost like I get to be the reader figuring it out as I go. Let me know if that makes sense because that probably sounds weird to some people, but I feel like other writers will get it. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. It's Thursday, March 3rd, 9.43. And I wrote, are you ready? 1,694 words. <laughs> That was in about 90 minutes and it was basically chapter five and six. Six was a little short, so either that needs to just be merged with five or it needs to be fleshed out, but that's a problem for editing Bethany. <laughs> I gotta say, I started thinking about book three last night and I couldn't fall asleep because I got so excited and so many ideas. And this is one of the things that's actually very motivating for me is to picture the future, picture the you guys reading the book, picture it being published, especially picturing covers for some reason, whenever I start daydreaming about covers, it makes it feel real and it makes me really, really, really want to get it done. So it's very motivating. <laughs> I was doing the math because the story itself is now, let me look at this, 8,604 words, just story. I'm getting close to the midpoint already, which means the midpoint could happen around 10,000 words, which then would mean that the first rough draft would be around 20,000, which means if this one doubled in size, it could be around 40,000 words. <laughs> So anyway, I am so excited to keep writing because the next writing session should be the game-changing midpoint. And oh my gosh, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna have a very big twist. There's lots of twists in this book. For whatever reason, the this one week that I decided to do this challenge, our sleep's been really weird. Last night, I could not sleep. I didn't feel good. And then we woke up super early, so yeah. It is Friday, March 4th today, right here. We're celebrating our anniversary of being married for six years. And I did decide to get up and write today. So I'm gonna have to like ruin this prettiness. <laughs> Shoot, we'll do that. So I have written every single day in March so far. That's four times compared to only eight times in all of February. And here's my count so far in case you're curious. I just hit 12,000 actual written words, but I think actually I'm right under 10,000 for what I've kept in the story. Cause remember some of that's outlined. And then so far 12 hours and 10 minutes. Hi guys, it's a Friday night, March 4th. We just got back from spending the day at Mall of America and hanging out, so it was really fun. Hi Penny, you wanna come be in the video? I love you, I love you. We used to like go on a trip every year for our anniversary, but not this year, it's too much work. So let's recap how this week went because oh my gosh, spoiler, it went really, really well. I wrote this morning 955 words. I know I said I wasn't going to, but then I was excited. I wanted to write. So the number one first thing that I found from writing in the morning is I'm excited to start my day that way. It feels really good to start right off the bat with writing. And then the second thing is that I felt like I wasn't as guilty because I hadn't like gone out and begun the day yet. So I didn't feel like I was like, this is gonna sound really weird, but I didn't feel like I was like on the job yet. It felt like it was still kind of me time, however you wanna take that. And then the other really cool thing is if you look at my writing week, 
Look at this. Wrote the first four days, every single day this month so far. That's incredible. And I did write the midpoint. Like if the, if the midpoint is like a the peak of the book. I like wrote right when they reached the tip and it's the plot twisty moment, the game changing midpoint where everything just like fell apart for my character. And she's like, ah crap, I thought everything was going well. Nope. <laughs> so what I realized though, is if you count, it's only taken me 12 actual writing days so far and I'm already like halfway done with the first draft. So that means that in theory, in theory, I could write a whole book well, this particular book, which is shorter, in 24 days. And if I was actually like writing every single day, it could literally be in a month, which of course is why there's NaNoWriMo writing a book in a month. This is going to be shorter than a typical NaNoWriMo book though, I think, maybe. <laughs> I mean, whenever I go back to read what I last wrote, I always start editing and adding more. So I know that it's very, very, very underwritten. I think that's the right word that I'm going for, where basically you know that there's a lot more of story to tell, but you get the essence of it, the important bits, and then you flesh it out later. So I go back in and I'm like, okay, let's put some more dialogue. Here we need some more scene setting. Here we need to have a little bit of narrative from the character. We need to show what they're thinking thinking more, just stuff like that, depending on what the scene needs. So to sum up, writing in the mornings, very creative, feel really good about it, love starting the day off with something accomplished already, writing a lot of words, much more capable of writing every single day and not missing a day unless I'm exhausted. <laughs> the downsides would be obviously the exhaustion and like, oh my gosh, I love sleep and I I'm very tired. I feel like I have huge bags under my eyes right now. And then the other downside that I didn't totally see coming, but oh my gosh, it's very real, is I'm, I get super hungry. Tomorrow's Saturday, so I think I'm actually going to sleep in for real. And then I think I have a big chunk of time where my husband's going to take Zion to his family again. So for the next vlog, I might try writing as fast as possible for as long as possible and just see how that goes. And if writing and using like a big chunk of time just yeah see how that goes like I don't know like will I burn out will I be like ah this is too much writing time maybe I need to <laughs> do something else I don't know I'm very curious to see how that will go so that's the next experiment and then after that I actually want to try switching to night writing I want to take a lot of the benefits that I got from the morning which is like Zion is sleeping. That's a huge benefit. Did I not say that? That's a huge benefit. Very, very focused time by myself. And I'm still going to do the same thing I do. I've done all this week, which is I sit there in bed and I just think about the story and I start to have ideas come to me. But instead of waiting for the morning, I'm going to most likely get up again. This is what I used to do all the time. I would go to bed. I would start thinking about the story. And I'd be like, I got to get up. I got to write this. And I would just be up for a couple more hours. The downside that I can see is that I might not know when to stop. So we'll see how it goes. Since Zion was born, I have seen at least four, if not like five or six different authors who talk about just writing all day long. They'll spend the whole day writing. They'll go on a writing retreat, you know, here's a 10K day or a 5K day. I guess I just really didn't appreciate what a luxury that was until I couldn't do it anymore. The most I have ever written in a day since Zion was born was 90 minutes. I've never written longer than an hour and a half since he was born. And then the most words that I've written were when I did that outline, but we're not gonna count that. So I would say, actually just a couple days ago when I wrote 1,694 words. So today Mosin is bringing Zion to his parents' house again because it's Saturday. He's going away for a couple hours and I was like, oh my gosh, let's see how much I can write. Let's have my, not a 10K day. Honestly, I've never done 10K in a day, even back when I did have time and I did try. I think the most I've ever written in a day was like a little over 7,000 maybe. But the point is I'm going to use all this free time and actually see how far I can get by the time they come home. I think we have somewhere between like two to three hours. He says three, but he might want to come home sooner. I'm going to bank on at least two hours, hopefully three, and see how far I can get in the story. This might not seem like a big deal to those of you who like just do whatever you want at any time, but I don't usually have this much free time. This is very, very rare. So let's see how much I can get done in three hours and if I even have the stamina to write 
for three hours anymore. So we don't have time to waste. Let's get to it ASAP. Like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door All right, it is 11.20. Ignore this background, it's so old, I need a new one. I've been writing for 50 minutes and I realized that I actually had written chapter seven. So I started at chapter eight right here and wrote this much. So I actually have written, let's see if it'll focus, 1,097 words already. Woo, that feels so, so good. All right, I have 10 minutes before I start hour two. Hi, Penny. So I am gonna go and make a smoothie because I'm super hungry. I wanted to escape for a while. Thought that a couple of drinks could ease my mind. I've been thinking of you for two weeks straight. I know that I need to get myself back in the game. Someone said your name had a ton of rope. Suddenly you're there standing near the crowd. Everything comes back in the blink of an eye It's like you're mine, you're still mine They skip the small talk Cause you know me better than I Know myself or my spit a while now Alright, don't judge me. I've never been good at making a smoothie, but on top of that, keep in mind we're still on our diet. Yesterday I did a cheat day where um, we celebrated our anniversary, so I had like coffee and with you know all the good stuff and ice cream and pasta but I actually felt really really gross yesterday after doing all that so now I'm back to trying to fuel my body with good stuff and it's like if you missed all the other vlogs it's kind of complicated but one of the things you might have noticed is that I did not put dairy in here dairy is one of the things that they had us cut out on this particular diet my arm's getting tired I'm gonna put you like right here here's something interesting for those of you who are like me and you like to know kind of the details and the facts behind things. I was actually researching, like I've told you guys before, stuff that helps with resetting your hormones, not just your metabolism, but especially the hormones, because I know like pregnancy in particular can just make them go totally out of whack. But also I think in general, a lot of women, when we have weight issues, it's because of hormonal stuff and figuring that out can actually really, really help. So I was watching a video where they talked about dairy in particular, specifically milk, and they were like, you never know if you're drinking milk from a pregnant cow. And if you are, cows have different hormones in them for their pregnancies that are not meant for humans whatsoever. And it can really throw you off. And I was like, what? Are you serious? And so I'm not going to lie. I love milk so much that I can't picture actually giving it up forever. But I do want to see how it goes if I do these like plant-based <laughs> I am not someone who enjoys that. I love, love, love my milk and I love cheese, but both of those are off limits right now and I'm very curious to see if it'll make a difference. But anyway, oh my gosh, I've been talking too long. Now it is, I just gotta point that out. It is 11, basically 11.45 now. So I wasted a little bit of time, right Penny? That was a mistake. You go ahead and nap. I gotta get back to work on hour two. So I think my plan is I'm here in what's now chapter nine. I think I'm going to read through. This is all outlined. I'm gonna kind of read through, skim it. A lot of it's very big picture from what I remember glancing at before I left. So I might need to add some more outline and flesh this out before I start writing it again. But we've gotten through the game changing midpoint and she has now started into, I guess what would be the bad guys closing in, which is a very, very long beat. So this will 
probably also be bad guys closing in with some fun um, stakes rising and all that good stuff. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Stop talking, Bethany. Let's go. It's 12.36 and I needed a little snack break and stretch break. So I have these boiled eggs and I'm just having one. So what I do is I just put mayo on them. I think this is cheating on the diet a little bit, but I, I don't like eggs. <laughs> and honestly, I don't, my body doesn't love them either. I have a slight, mm, I'm a little more than a slight intolerance to them, but I'm just kind of pushing through because there's not a lot of options on a diet this strict. So I put salt, pepper, and paprika on it. And of course the mayo, and then I'm just going to like shove them in my mouth and force myself to eat them. <laughs> Cheers to my very messy house. It's not bad. It's just not great either. <laughs> All right, I just got up and had a little stretch break because I'd written for another 50 minutes and I was getting really like stiff and hungry. So I had a little snack, had some water and I'm excited to say, get this, in the last 50 minutes, I wrote another 1,016 words. So my total so far, I had to write down the math, is 2,113 words. And I don't know if they're gonna be coming home soon. So I've got my phone here just to keep an eye on it but I'm gonna try not to look at it. That was one of the things that <laughs> distracted me a little bit here. And let's see, the next section that I'm going to write is still chapter nine, but I've gotten pretty far. I've written, looks like six more pages, but I still have pretty much all the outline I started with. This is all stuff that wasn't in the outline and I was like, oh, this needs to be in there and this is gonna be really good and I need this in there. But I'm sort of stuck on how to piece what I just wrote together with what I want from the outline, if that makes sense. So it's sort of like puzzling right now and trying to figure out exactly how to make it fit seamlessly. So yeah, I guess here's to another hour. Let's see how it goes. All right, it's almost 1.10 and Mosin just texted me that he's on the way home. So I have written the end of chapter nine and like the very first line of chapter 10. This was only 244 words. So I only got 20 more minutes in in this third supposed hour, but that's okay. My total for the day was 2,357 words in two hours exactly. So, okay, let's sum up how it went. I really thought that being able to write in a really long consecutive amount of time would be super beneficial. And it was at first, I was on a roll those first two writing sessions, but honestly, I was getting tired and I was pretty much done. My creative energies had pretty much been used up. So the first thing that that makes me realize is maybe the fact that I've only ever had an hour and a half before was actually my perfect, uh, what do they call it? My, the genius zone amount of time. It was like just right for me where I still had energy the whole time through. But if I'd gone much further past that, like I did today, kind of ran out of juice. <laughs> I will say listening to music helped me get back in the creative zone whenever I was like, oh, I'm feeling tired. I just want to go, you know, on Instagram or go read a book. <laughs> then that helps me kind of still stay in the story and keep going. But yeah, I'm glad that I'm done. But I'm also a little bit stuck where I am right now. I just need to, I feel like I could write it right now if I really needed to, but it wouldn't be as exciting as if I come back to it fresh with more energy and like a more exciting way to write it than what I have come up with so far. One of the things that does make writing come faster to me though is for sure that I am just choosing to write what I would actually wanna read. So instead of being like, okay, Okay. The outline says she has to come up with a plan and go here. If I'm like, no, it'd be more exciting if she did this other thing and it, it would be unexpected. I'm letting myself do it because it's way more exciting. And if it's more exciting to me, then it's going to be more exciting to readers too. So that's kind of fun. I just feel like even though I do outline a little bit when I first start out, just to get the kind of like the roadmap, like point A to point B, so I don't get totally lost and go in the opposite direction. <laughs> um, other than that, I feel like I'm pretty much a discovery writer and I love Love it because it almost feels like I am reading the story with you guys when it's going well. When it's not going well, 
it's not as fun, but it happens. <laughs> anyway, I gotta go make a bottle so that it's ready when Zion comes home and I can go cuddle with him. And now I actually get to read a book like I wanted to. So it's a fun reward. But the next one is going to be where I'm going to try writing at night. And I'm a little nervous because I do have a habit of staying up too late. So we will see how that goes. That's pretty cool, huh? What do you think? There's your crib. Yeah. Let's see how this goes with a co-host today. You guys know I've been trying to write at different times of day and different amounts of time, trying to find kind of my new creative zone or whatever you want to call it. I feel like I might have actually found the perfect length of time for me now in this season of life, but I haven't tried every time of day yet. So I've tried writing in the mornings. That went surprisingly well. FYI for everybody in the comments who said, oh, I wish I could do that, but I'm a night owl. Me too. I always, always, always used to write late at night and I couldn't write during the day, but you do what you gotta do. <laughs> and then of course I've been writing in the middle of the day a lot because that's when nap times are and you do what you gotta do. I'm just trying to tell them about writing. Oh. Where are you trying to go? I'm trying to go places. So this week, finally, I'm going to try writing late at night, which again, used to be my absolute best time of writing. And I hate to say it, but I did need to take a few days off because I was just exhausted. We've been trying to switch Zion into his crib here. He used to sleep in his bassinet, which is on this side. So our first step is basically putting the bassinet in here at night and he's loving it. He's doing great. Should have done it sooner, but he's not a big fan of this crib here. Um, I don't know if it's too big. Is it too big? Or it's not bouncy or something. And I promise I'm watching all the YouTube videos on what to do. So I think at this point we've got like a 50% success rate for getting him in the crib <laughs> during the day. But the reason I bring that up is because the bassinet used to be out in the main living area and we were like, okay, I think we're finally ready to switch. It was so nice to have him close to our room, but not in in our room but now I think you are ready for your big kid room and it's time oh. <laughs> yeah you think that's funny so he's been in here two nights now the first night didn't go super well but last night went amazing he was in bed by 7 30 and then Molson wanted to go to bed by like 8 30 and I wasn't tired and I was like oh my gosh this is my opportunity wasn't tired is a bit of a stretch but I was less tired <laughs> so I was like you know what let's stay up and write for the first time. So yesterday was March 10th, and I thought I'd give you guys a little sneak peek of how that went. So excited by how last night went. Like you saw, I wrote 1,440 words in only 50 minutes. So the question that I have in my mind is, is my writing muscle, so to speak, just getting stronger because I've been increasing my word count over time? Or were nights actually very good for creativity? I obviously don't have enough data yet. So I'm gonna keep going throughout this week, probably into next week. I need at least three days, if not more, probably more. But really quick, let me give you a tour of Zion's room. I finally put the decal on the wall here. We've got his crib, some toys. There's the bassinet that I mentioned, and I love this wall. And then I finally put up the other decal here too. I love this one. Oh, and a diaper changing table. <laughs> All right, Zion, it's time for you to have a nap. So mama's gonna turn off the light. We're getting, trying to get good at this. Gonna have a little bit of screaming baby time. There, the light already adjusted. That's pretty good. So anyway, I will take care of him and then I'm gonna hopefully write again tonight. So I will see you then. 
Welcome to my laundry room. This is the furthest away that I can get from Zion's room while he's sleeping, so I'm trying not to wake him up. But I wanted to update you guys because it's actually Monday, March 14th, and I obviously haven't written in like four days now. I just desperately needed the weekend to do other things. We went to see family, but also I had to prep for my book bug feature deal that I've been telling you guys about. Yeah, I just had like a lot to do. I was feeling stressed. I needed to work on my newsletter, work on setting up the promo, making promo images. And then also a really, really big thing that's been taking up our time is getting this little guy to sleep because he has always been a really great sleeper at night. He sleeps really good. He usually gets up once in the middle of the night. I do that and then my husband takes him whenever he wakes up in the morning, like six or seven or whatever. But I felt like he should be napping more during the day and I was talking to people on Instagram and my sister-in-law actually recommended this book to me. So not sponsored at all, but I am absolutely loving this one. I'm only this far, so I have gotten a ton of good info already for any of the moms who are interested. <laughs> but anyway. Coming back to the writing, let's talk about it. Yes, I'm able to write more at night, at least in the one time that I've written. I know that in the past I could write the most at night and it seems like that might be the case now with a tiny bit of data we have, but the downside that I did not expect is that it is really, really, really hard to feel creative and to want to be creative to like take the first step and sit down and write. Because at that point, like when it's bedtime, even if it's as early as like 8.30 or 9, and I'm like, I have time, I could write for an hour, it's not that late, and then I could go to bed, and it's really like, that's when I normally go to bed. There's just something about it that's like, but what if he wakes up and he missed sleep? Or what if you don't get enough sleep? And it's just like, I really thought that's how I'd feel about mornings, where I wouldn't want to take away from my sleep in the morning, but I guess in the morning, I know I've had enough. Whereas at night, I don't know how the night's gonna go. I'm usually exhausted by that point just because it's a lot of work to take care of a little guy. And so, gosh, the idea of sitting down to write is just, it's like a mixture between overwhelming and just sometimes just, it just sounds like a lot and I just am tired. That said, we have a book to finish and I really think that if I could sit down and keep working on it for even, I don't know, what did we say? 10 more days, 11 more days or whatever it is at this point, I would probably have a finished first draft, which is crazy, really cool. <laughs> so I need to just do it. So I am updating you here to make myself feel accountable that I am going to sit down unless something crazy happens and do some late night writing tonight. And this is going to work. I'm gonna psych myself up for this. It's gonna be okay because Zion actually slept for the first time ever nine hours in a row last night. I'm so excited about it. I can't even tell you guys how excited I am and so proud of him, but just a little insight into my mind. I did not sleep that whole time because I was the crazy mom worrying over him and just wondering, oh my gosh, is he gonna wake up? Is he okay? Is I should check the monitor. And I literally had like this like adrenaline rush by the seventh hour <laughs> going into the eighth hour. I was like, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I can't sleep, I gotta check on him. So I actually went into his room. There's like a guest bed in there still that we haven't removed yet. And so I actually just slept in there for an hour and then he finally woke up and I looked at the time and I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So I'm very proud of him. That is my signal that this is doable. I am gonna get enough sleep. I just have to reassure myself and I have to stop freaking out in the middle of the night and wondering if he's okay, <laughs> cause he's fine. Sorry if this whole section was echoey. That's what happens when we're in the laundry room. <laughs> But anyway, I'm gonna go and get as much work done as possible while he's sleeping so that I can have my brain cleared for work tonight. But before I forget, I just wanna show you some fun pictures from the tour because I got to work with Sapphire Ink Press on Instagram. I'll shout her out here. She's amazing, I definitely recommend her. I wanted to give her a little shout out because I am loving the pictures coming through and it's just like a one day blast about the sale to let everybody know. And there's so many pretty pictures, so thank you. And I'm also doing a giveaway just in general on my Instagram where I'm giving away a $50 Amazon gift card to anybody who shares about the sale because I just want to spread the word as much as possible. That was my baby. I gotta go. <sighs> I guess I'll talk to you guys later and I'll let you know how tonight goes. Hi guys, it is still Monday, March 14th, but it's now about 8.40 p.m. I don't feel like writing. I really, 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 really don't feel like 
writing. I just have like zero creativity right now. I feel like if I was a battery, I'm on low, but Molson has a show that he's watching. And so I figured I have an hour, hour and a half, depending on when uh, we both get tired and want to go to bed, where I could just write. So I came in here, just got on my phone instead, and I'm just not in the mood. I have no desire to write, which, you know, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we push through, but this is like another level where I'm just, I'm so tired and so burnt by the day that I just don't know if I even have it in me right now, if I'm being real with you. I miss mornings. I honestly do. I don't want to keep doing this. I don't know if it's just this week because we're working on, I wouldn't call it sleep training, but working on helping Zion go to sleep without the bottle. So it does take more time, a tiny bit more crying. He's not a big crier, but it's enough that it's draining. Anyway, enough complaining. I don't know if I can make it till 930, which would be 50 minutes, but it's 840. I'm going to try even just 20 minutes of writing, see if I can get something done. Maybe it'll just be brainstorming, but either way, here we go. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep? Every night, and what's it dreaming of? All right, it is 9.35. So I've been writing for, gosh, what is that, 40, 50 minutes? I'll put it on the screen because I can't even remember. But I have written, I didn't even check yet. Here's where I left off last time through chapter 11. And this is not really a chapter so much as a scene, but I started a new chapter because I just wanted a fresh spot to start next time. So I've written this much and it looks like that is 1,114 words. So more than I thought, but it definitely felt like it was being dragged out of me. I'm not feeling it like I told you guys. So I don't think I'm going to push anymore. I'm going to just do something else that I actually want to do, like read a book or I don't know, just go to bed. I'm so tired. Oh my gosh, I just realized I didn't even say I'm wearing a different shirt than earlier today. I got spit up on. It happens. <laughs> There's a lot of outfit changes sometimes. I just don't know if I want to keep going. I really don't want to. I want to go back to mornings because it felt so good to start the day with an accomplishment. And I was so good about like doing it and getting it done. And then the rest of the day, I was like, doesn't matter if, you know, I don't get everything else done because I did that. And I think I was more productive in general. Only way to know if something doesn't work is to try, right? So... I'm gonna give it, I think, one more night, and then if it doesn't get better, who am I kidding? I've already been procrastinating like five or six or seven different nights and putting it off. I've only written two out of like seven nights that I had the option, but I'm gonna make myself try one more time tomorrow at least and just see if it gets better. Any, you wanna go to bed too, don't you? You wanna go to bed? <sighs> anyway, wish me luck. That is some crazy hair. Yay. It is Tuesday, March 15th at about 8.15 p.m. Just got Zion to bed. And I mean, I feel like going to bed right now is a little weird. So it seems like a good night for writing. Molson's watching that show again. It'll probably be done tonight at the rate he's going. So no excuses. This is a writing night. Still not feeling it. I was thinking about it and I was like, I think I just have used up all my energy and I just don't have enough left for creating really. If you remember a few vlogs back where I was feeling really burnt out, it was just like I'd put so much into work and I just didn't have enough left over for writing. It's kind of that feeling again, but it's more so because it's night versus starting the day out when I have re-energized just by sleeping, I guess. Although I will say I was thinking about how I'm getting just more irritable and tired and I think it's time to read a book for fun. So I'm actually going to try to find a good one to start on audiobook for the middle of the night feeding tonight and just treat myself because I've been listening to nonfiction, which is fine, but it doesn't, it doesn't give me the same energy. <laughs> So anyway, I cannot get over this hair. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what's happening here. No excuses. It's time to go write. 
and um, I think the only thing that's helping me is listening to music. So I've been trying to find new songs as I go, kind of putting Spotify on shuffle, seeing what calls to me, <laughs> and uh, that's helped a little bit. So has daydreaming about book three. I actually want to, by the time this mini series is done and I finish book two, this first draft, I want to figure out the title the actual title. And to do that, I think I realize I need to figure out the title of book three because they need to go together. It needs to be, what is it? The adjective noun, but will it all be the secret this, the secret that, the secret this, or will it be the secret gift and then the something secret and then the secret something, or will they all be different? And it'll just be again, the adjective noun. That's how the Stolen Kingdom series is. They don't obviously have words that match so that might be a little too tricky but in case you're wondering book two does have a secret as well so it would work it's a very secretive character therefore the series could have a lot of secrets it does have a lot book two has its own secret i don't know if book three does so i'm thinking i almost need to outline book three just to get a sense of what the story is about because i know there's something there but i don't know the full arc and then once i have that outlined and i know the secret or if there is a secret in that book then i'll know how to title them if that makes sense okay so anyway Let's get to it. Enough procrastinating. It's now officially 8.20. Time to go. I'm going to write for 50 minutes or so because that's kind of my sweet spot and call it good. See what I get. I wanted to escape for a while. Not that a couple of drinks could ease my mind. I've been thinking of you for two weeks straight. I know that I need to get myself back in the game. Someone said your name had a ton of room Suddenly you're there sending me the crowd all right, it's about 9.15. I didn't actually start at 8.20 because I was working on sort of a outline for book three in theory. All I actually did is I scrolled through The Cursed Hunter until I found mentions of The Haunt of the Day. Then once I scrolled through every part where I thought it could be, I realized I think the actual legend is in book four, The Enchanted Crown. So I need to go through that next and then I want to start outlining. I have the beat set up, the hook, opening image, theme, their misbelief set up, inside incident, catalyst debate, the impossible choice, break into two. Got kind of a nice blend here. I really want to do a video soon about outlining so let me know if you're interested in that. But long story short, this took a while so I didn't actually get started until 8 40 and so I've only been going I guess 40 minutes so let's see what I have to show for it here. I started chapter 12 so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and let's see what it says. 353 words. 353 words is not a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah I think that proves my point actually. I was struggling and I was like I don't feel it. I feel burnt out. I feel like that just proves that you can't push yourself too far like you have to pay attention to the signals and if you don't want to write like that's normal but if you're like really really just can't even stand the thought of writing that's a whole different thing like i love this book i want to write it i just don't want to write it at night <laughs> i thought i would i honest to goodness i thought this would be my favorite time of day you guys know i'm a night writer but no not at all i'm done i'm done i don't need any more data to know this is stressing me out because in my head the whole time I just kept thinking oh my gosh what if Zion wakes up early tonight what if he gets up and I'm exhausted what if he gets up and I need to feed him and I didn't get enough sleep and I'm so close to finishing this book you guys like let's see let's see let's take a look here so I am currently in the bad guys closing which as you know is a big beat so I'm pretty sure this next chapter will also be the bad guys I can't remember but at some point obviously it's gonna shift into the dark night of the soul and we're gonna have an all is lost Moment, and then they're gonna break into three, have this revelation. It's gonna be this amazing plan. I'm really, really excited about her plan because it's gonna be terrible, but she's gonna think it's amazing. And then that's gonna lead to that five point finale. So this is where my outline ends and the rest of this is back matter. So I have about this much outline. 16 pages of outline it looks like. And then yeah, the story will be done. All right, I'm gonna call it a night. I know it's only 9.10, well, it's 9.20 now, but I have some YouTube videos that I really wanted to edit. Let me show you. We've got a few good things in the works. So I think I'm gonna edit this one a little bit and then go to bed. 
because I'm exhausted. Thanks for being here with me through my own dark night of the soul and the bad guys closing in. That's how I feel right now. I feel like night writing turned out to be the bad guys and I'm in a dark night of the soul, but it's okay because I'm about to break into three. I'm about to go back to morning writing and I'm gonna finish this book and it's gonna feel amazing. And I'm excited to know what happens. I really genuinely can't wait. I just, I don't have it in me to find out at night. In this vlog, I really, really, really hope that I can finish this first draft. I'm super close. I think there's like, gosh, maybe 10,000 words or less to go. Here's my word tracker and time tracker so far. So I've written 16 days for a total of 18,000 words, a little over, and over 16 hours, going on 17 hours now. So if I were to stay on track, because I am nerdy, don't mind me, I like to kind of project what it's gonna look like. If I were to stay on track, then I might finish with like roughly eight more writing days, supposedly, I don't know, I don't know. But it's March 19th, like I said, so I have time. I could finish this book, at the end of this month. I don't know if I can, but I could, but I don't know if I can. You know what I'm saying? If you watched the last vlogs, I'll link them below if you missed them, but it's been a little rough lately. I have just realized that writing at night's not for me right now. <laughs> it actually has started to give me insomnia, so get this. Zion slept 10 and a half hours last night. 10 and a half hours. I was like mind blown right now, but I am the idiot who was awake checking on him. By the end of that, the last two hours, like every 20 seconds, it's only a slight exaggeration. And I was just like, is he okay? Is he okay? What's going on? He did a nine hour night once before and he's done a few eight hours, but 10 and a half hours in a row. I was genuinely worried. So I didn't sleep hardly at all. I'm gonna try to fix that. Hopefully by the end of this vlog, we will have figured that out together because I don't know what's going on. Um, I just need to have some more peace. I need to start praying about it. And then I want to write in the mornings instead of at night. That way I know I got enough sleep because that was really working for me. <laughs> and I've been procrastinating, but. I don't have any more excuses because this is the video that I just put up, but I have also uploaded the next vlog. It's ready to go. You can see it's unlisted. I also have this video up in the queue unlisted and I just finished editing my, I don't know what to call this yet. This might change slightly for the title, but Author Money Tips is actually uploading right now. So I have three videos in the queue plus the seventh vlog where I did my night writing attempt, which I haven't edited yet, but that'll be up before this video is up obviously. So I have no excuses anymore. I'm way ahead on videos. And can I just say as a side note, I was really not expecting this for mom life. I was so, so, so stressed about never gonna get work done anymore. I'm never gonna do anything anymore. And it's like the opposite. Like I have such a high efficiency rate now. <laughs> when I have two minutes to spare, I get about 3,000 things done. <laughs> you know, not quite, but close. And so I'm over here like, what's going on? I think, I think I'm working a little too hard because I keep wanting to cram everything I possibly can into every spare tiny second. So I am getting a little burned out. I think I need to slow down. But like I said, I have so many videos ready to go that I can take a break in making videos and just focus on writing this week or next week. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, Sunday, I'm going to take tomorrow off to again, get a little bit of recovery from burnout because I'm pushing too hard. I would love to read a book and just hang out and not be stressed, probably see family. It's gonna be a busy day anyway. And then on Monday morning, I wanna kick it off and start writing and keep going each morning until I finish this book. So I just, I hope that the sleep will work out. I hope Zion will cooperate. Last time I tried to do this, he was like, ha, ah, just kidding, I'm not sleeping anymore. But he is an amazing sleeper for the most part, so I have faith. So I'll see you on Monday. Hi, I did not write this morning. Um, long story short, Zion is sleeping amazing. I cannot say enough good things about this book because, oh my gosh, she slept nine and a half hours last night. And the two nights before that were both 10 and a half hours. And then it was like another nine and another eight in a row. So it's like amazing, right? But my body is still prepped for waking up in the middle of the night. So I'm waking up like every hour on the hour. And 
what's wrong with me? Like I literally am sleeping worse than ever and he's sleeping better than ever. And it's not supposed to be this way. I'm supposed to be able to also sleep really well. Even for his naps, he's getting so good that he's going to sleep within a few minutes and no crying, no fussing. He just naturally puts himself to sleep. So he's learning how to self-soothe and all this good stuff. Meanwhile, I am over here exhausted. So I did not wake up early to write. I was like, you know what? This is a vlog about writing whenever I can, whenever it works. So I will try to write later today. So I did earlier, I had him down for a nap. I was getting ready to write, but there was a few housekeeping things I had to do. I had to go on YouTube and answer some comments. I had a video that just released today. So I had to, you know, I wanted to answer the comments and chat with you guys. And then I had to send the Amazon gift card winner information to the winner. And yeah, just a few little things like that. Call and make Zion a doctor's appointment. So by the time I got through with those little things, he woke up, which is fine. That means that he'll have a longer nap later. And that's when I'm trying to write again. But right now, he's playing with his toys. You can probably hear him. And I'm just going to do a few more housekeeping things and hang out with him. The good news is, according to this book, you have a 90 minute awake window at this age. So it's really at this point, just a little bit longer till I put him back into his crib for another nap. And then that's when I'll try again. <laughs> so, <sighs> yeah, mom life. <laughs> You guys just put him down for a nap here's hoping he'll fall asleep as fast as he did this morning got like laundry to fold people that I'm supposed to call for his like doctor's appointment I think I did that one this morning but I need to call back because I didn't answer and I left a message come on baby you got this you got this anyway um <laughs> There's so much to do, but I am going to ignore it all and come right. So first I'm gonna make green tea because I've been hearing that this is actually really good for balancing hormones. And as you guys know, still trying to figure that out. Still trying to work through, learn, you know, as much as I possibly can. I feel like I am just brushing the surface, honestly, of the hormone stuff. Like I, I know that there's more to learn, but I will say for those of you who are wondering, so far the last two weeks I've lost two more pounds-ish. It fluctuates still, but that's much more normal to lose a pound a week. That's much more healthy. So <laughs> here's hoping I can keep it up. I got a long ways to go, but I am going for walks. That's another thing that I've been kind of learning. I can't remember if I shared it in a vlog or not, but I feel like for women, walking can actually be super beneficial because it doesn't trigger cortisol, which is like, I think called, I think called the stress hormone or something like that. Anyway, it doesn't trigger that, which that hormone, I think it's a hormone, yeah, can cause you to actually hold on to weight. So by doing really intense workouts for like an hour or something like that, we can actually end up causing ourselves to hold on to more weight versus just walking can cause us to lose weight because you're getting that beneficial exercise without going into like a stress mode for your body. All that to say, I, as soon as I heard that, I was like, that makes so much sense. I used to work this job in the hospital where I would walk for eight hours and I never was more fit in my entire life and I did nothing else and I ate terribly. So I think the tea is almost done. I'm going to go put it together. Hopefully it tastes good. I'm not a tea person, but I want to become one. <laughs> and uh, and then I'm just going to force myself to get started writing because we got a lot to do and I don't know if we have that much time. But good news, he just fell asleep. So I think it's time. Let's go. It is, what time is it buddy? 2.23. I started at 1.50. 
so only like 30 minutes because I did so many other things. I wasted time again. And this was a shorter nap, maybe like an hour. You're so cute. So now we're waking up, right? And mama has to check how much I wrote, but I don't think it's much. I wonder if I can do this with you here. I wrote 296 words. <laughs> so not very much. I was super distracted, I'm not gonna lie. I guess it's been a few days since I wrote. Let me check. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> you like those flowers? You like that? It's been like a whole week. I guess I had no idea. Well, what did I just do? I just deleted everything I wrote. <laughs> Control Z. Let's not do that again. <laughs> Wanna go play? I wish I could say that uh, I was gonna write during his next nap, but I just wanna read so bad and I just, I have so many other things to get done, so I'm gonna call it good. 296 words, it's progress, and uh, you are squirmy. I guess we're gonna be over here looking at the flowers on the wall for a bit. That's very exciting. Wow. Okay, let's go. Okay, Zion just went down for a nap. He's right across the hall, so I gotta stay quiet, sorry. Wednesday, March 23rd. I haven't done a thing since I talked to you guys last. It's been, oh, I was joking last time that I was in the dark night of the soul for the story beats. If you've ever read this, you know what I'm talking about. And then the next story beat is the all is lost moment. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> But I feel like, I don't really feel like all is lost, but I kind of do. I kind of feel like this week, um, Monday, Mosin officially went back to work. Like he, he's never like stopped working completely. He's been working in the winter, but he was able to be home a lot more and do a lot of his work from home versus now he's starting to leave the house. It's not even that early yet. He's leaving like 10 or 11 and he's coming home around five or six, but it's going to keep expanding as the weather gets warm to the point where it will soon be like 7 a.m. or earlier until 7 p.m. or later. And I know this, I'm used to this as a non-mom, but as a mom who honestly needs a lot of me time. <laughs> Just being real with you guys. I am stressing about it again It's not a real all is lost because I love being a mom. I love my son But I feel like I thought I could actually keep writing books at a very similar pace But at this rate when I'm by myself all day um, And it's going to be literally all day pretty soon and he's not really napping during the day He's sleeping great at night. He slept like 12 hours last night with one tiny feeding in the middle But during the day he is not always sleeping being like it's a half hour here 40 minutes there and then there'll be like one golden two hour nap and then it's like ah just kidding back to 30 minutes i don't feel a real all is lost but i feel a little bit like i've lost the opportunity to finish my book but i know that's not true so i'm planning to break into three tomorrow <laughs> Not today, because I'm so tired. So the last couple days, I let myself read a book. So this is book three. Last night, I finished it around 11.30. And then something else that I've been doing to feel more, I guess, in control is when Zion is awake. I've been hanging out with him in this room. I'll have his, like, play mat on the floor in my office. And I'll, he likes to kind of, like, watch me work. So, like, I feel guilty if I'm just sitting and typing at a computer. Plus, I can't focus because I got to help him a lot. But I can do more, like what would you call this? Like really thoughtless work, I guess. So I've been cleaning my closet. I've got all my shipping materials up here that I've been saving boxes from Amazon and like the grocery bags that Amazon uses because pretty soon I want to use my time, if <laughs> the little time that I have, maybe when I finish writing this first draft and I want to do another sign and copy sale. So I'm thinking of doing something fun and exciting there and putting those up on my website soon. Anyway, I cleaned out some of these binders these three binders all had like tons and tons of story information that I recycled. This is like one massive stack in this size box. And then we've got a diaper box literally full all the way to the top with just like random notes from different books, from beta processes, you know, story outlines. So literally, what is that? That's like, I don't know, like five reams of paper right there. I have most and keep his clothes in here. Got my light boxes in here. And then I just have a couple boxes left to go through that is like miscellaneous junk. And then I will have officially 
really cleaned this out. So anyway, it feels really, really good to have that in control. I think when Zion is awake, I'm gonna do that again because it sort of, it entertains him. And so <laughs> that way I can feel like being a good mom, showing him what cleaning looks like and getting something done, even if it's not my story. And then I'm getting better at sleeping, you guys, but I still think something's going on. I think that maybe I do have something hormonal, like something's off. I want to, if I can, I would love to to do some sort of like test to figure it out. So I want to look into that because I feel like, I don't know if I have really high cortisol levels or something, or my mom has um, a thyroid issue. So maybe I am developing that since it's genetic. I don't know what's going on, but I just feel off. I feel like at this point I am actually getting enough sleep, but I'm waking up a lot and I'm waking up tired after getting enough sleep. So I wish this vlog was about more writing. I'm totally vlogging with my Curology patch on my face too. Don't mind me. If you know what that is, then you'll laugh. Anyway, all that to say, I could write today because he is sleeping really well at the moment, but I just, I'm burnt out. I think another issue is the story isn't going as well as it was because I think I am, I'm not gonna say it's a roadblock. I'm not hitting a roadblock exactly, but I'm hitting more of a gap area <laughs> where I'm like, do I really know what the character wants? Am I really including all of the information that the reader is gonna wanna see? Am I bringing this character in enough? Am I bringing this character in enough? Am I doing enough of their motivation and making it plausible, blah, blah, blah. Stuff that technically you can worry about during editing. Long story short, I think I need to take a day to just brainstorm and have the pressure off and then come back to it tomorrow. So wish me luck. Hopefully, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow with some progress. Wow. Oh, yeah. Really? He's got a lot to say. I've got Zion with me here. We're hanging out in my office while I clean out the closet. Let me show you. I've got absolute chaos on the floor. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're the cutest. It's almost time for nap time. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, okay. Give me one second. I gotta tell them how it went today. <coughs> really? I don't even know what I was gonna say. Uh, today is... Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a loud video. It is Thursday, March 24th, and... <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. I love you so much. Oh my gosh. He's helping me vlog today, obviously. I'm just gonna keep going. So this morning, I am super happy because I decided to bring my computer into my room last night, like back when I did morning writing. And okay, let me back up. He slept 12 hours. 12 hours. Like, well, technically 15 minutes short. He slept from 7.30 p.m. to 7.15 a.m. I slept great like not amazing but when you get like a 12-hour stretch it was so nice Ooh. and so I decided to bring my computer into my room last night so that I could do a little bit of morning writing before I like came out of the room for the day and got on mom duty I guess you could say and so that little bit of me time it was only like an hour and a half but it felt so good and it just total opposite of writing at night I felt amazing so I wrote from 7 15 a.m. when he was up and I I made sure he was alive because I was a little bit anxious again <laughs> to 815 so one hour of writing and I wrote 1039 words yeah, that's amazing I know and it crossed 19,000 in the novel as a whole so I don't know I'm thinking maybe another 5k maybe another 10k it's always hard to know because sometimes I'll write a super rough ending if I don't really know exactly what's gonna go on but other times I feel like the ending is what I know the best and so that's the most fleshed out part so it's hard to predict just yet but I actually ended up thinking of something that would help make the bad guys closing in section a little bit stronger so I went back to the beginning I don't usually let myself do that but when I really get excited about something I'm like okay I'll let myself go back so I went back to the beginning I added in something actually in like the first second or third page and it just made it more exciting later on and I know I'll have to go back through and kind of weave it together better you trying to talk to me hi <laughs> yeah Hi. Oh, I love you too. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
I gotta, I gotta just finish this out and then we'll go take a nap and have some food food. <gasps> yeah, your favorite. So, okay, what was I even saying? I have like the Curology patches on because I've been breaking out lately and I know why. It's because I've had some sugar. After our 21 day reset, we let ourselves have a couple days with sugar and I immediately saw it on my face. So I'm trying to be healthy again. And honestly, yeah, I honestly, I still have the cravings so bad sometimes, but I'm feeling so, so much better, which is really encouraging yeah, yeah and then the other thing that really helps me last night was I was reading about like again the hormones kind of trying to research that's just gonna be my project for a long time I think cortisol is, uh -huh, is a stress hormone that how do I describe it I'm <laughs> just learning about it. From what I gather, it's it sounds like something might be elevated in me where I get like this extra adrenaline at night and that keeps me from sleeping. <laughs> so I think that I need to, every time I try to talk, he talks. So basically I tried exercising before bed last night, which is something I normally wouldn't do because I think it would wake me up, but I felt like it actually helped relax me because it got out some of that adrenaline or possibly cortisol. <laughs> If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I have no idea. I don't know. So let's go put you to sleep and then I will deal with this mess behind me. Yeah. Sounds good. Oh my goodness. Who's the cutest boy ever? You are the cutest boy ever. What do you think? Are you hungry? Yeah? You hungry? So anyway, I'm just rambling now, but I wanted to report it was an awesome writing day. Very excited for the progress. And you have my hair. Ha! Ah! Wow, it's gross outside. Um, I just finished a writing session. I was sitting in my cozy chair here and uh, gosh, how much did I write? Let's check. Can you hear this? Hold on. I wrote for about 45 minutes and I wrote 637 words. And honestly, like I was gonna keep going and I'm like, yeah, I'm already burnt out. I don't think pushing myself when I'm this exhausted is a smart move for my creativity to continue to work for me. Like if I push too hard, it's gonna be bad. So I was like, it's good, we'll just be done for the day. We'll just do smaller amounts, it's fine. Only like 20 words before we hit 20 thousand words. We're at exactly 19,983 words. I'll just summarize by saying like it's not going badly but it's not going amazing either and I'm tempted to just actually take a couple days off and see if that would help but at the same time I want to finish the first draft and then take a break and recover because I don't want to lose momentum and forget what the story is about because I've got baby brain on top of the fact that I'm spacing it out so I just I don't want to forget what I've written. That can make editing a lot harder. Not sure what he's talking about, but uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just tired. So I guess I'll stop repeating myself and hopefully the next session will go better. It is Saturday, March 26th today, and it's almost noon, which means uh, Zion and my husband have been gone for two hours now, and I haven't written a thing. <laughs> I have so many excuses, okay? <laughs> so I desperately needed a shower. My hair was so greasy. The house needed cleaning. There was laundry to get done. I was also planning a signed book sale for these bad boys right here, and I think it's gonna be April 11th, through 16th so coming up pretty quick here I'm very excited and then I got sidetracked because I was trying to answer comments on Instagram and on YouTube and Instagram surprised me there was a lot of comments on there that I was really behind on but then also on YouTube the last video that I just did I'll be a good youtuber and show you right here is the trad pub is not for me it's taken off it's my top video out of the last 10 and it's 4,600 something views right now but then also if I go to analytics. This is really fun. You can see like on the graph there just how far it's taken off above my normal videos. Over here, 296 comments. And so I was trying to keep up with them, but I'm like, you know what? I just, I can't. I think I have to start making a rule again for my mental health, but also just for me to get stuff done that I can only answer comments the first day of videos out and then I need to refrain because otherwise I could spend all day doing that. Like I literally sat down. I was like, I'll just wait a few minutes for my hair to air dry a little bit and then like an hour later I'm like oh I gotta go dry my hair how long have I been doing this it's just 
you don't even realize it. So I am so bummed. I just used up a ton of time where I could have been writing. And honestly, it's not the best thing to do right before you want to be creative is be in that headspace. So I don't know why I did that. I am a little bit anxious about writing in general because I feel like I was laughing about being in my own dark night of the soul. And then I realized that I'm pretty much getting to that beat in the actual story. I'm about to write the dark night of the soul and to have it really be dark and awful, you gotta show why it matters to the character. And I feel like I just need to do some more work on the inner reasonings, I guess. I don't have the right word at this moment, but I need to figure out what truly matters most to my character so that the choices that she makes will feel genuine and realistic. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the next beat that I put here was post midpoint bad guys. And then I had like bullet points for what I think will happen. And as I was reading through it, I was like, you know what? I think that's actually the dark night of the soul, but I need to get her there. I need a little bit more of the bad guys closing in beat. I hope this is making sense. If you've read Save the Cat, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it just feels like there needs to be more there, but Again, this is just a first draft. I can always come back in edits and add a lot more, which I already have done a couple times throughout this process. I was like, oh my gosh, I should add this little thing in and that's fine. So maybe I just press forward and start writing The Dark Knight of the Soul and just see what happens. And if I realize that there's this gap there between you know, what I have of the bad guys so far and The Dark Knight, I can just add to that later in edits maybe? I don't know. Let's do this. Let's take stock of how far we've come because that usually motivates me. So I'm gonna go grab my bullet journal and let's take a look. I was knocked down, heard the countdown through the haze in the face of defeat, yeah. I was ruled out with no bail out on my own, all alone. 19,982. Some of that is outlined, but then we have 19 hours so far and 25 minutes written. 19 days total. So I am getting really close to the end. This is fun to see. And again, for those of you who ask also about my word count stickers, those are from Mandy Lynn. She has a website store. All of these stickers are from her. After I finish the laptop ones, which are my favorite, I'm going to probably move on to the book stack ones. I think I like these second best, but then also I did buy the gift wrap ones because I think they fit really nicely in the calendars that I make as well. So if you're curious, I do have a discount code Bethany10, I think gives you 10% off for all of her stickers here. And there's editing ones too. And I'm a proud affiliate for her stickers because obviously I love them. <laughs> I need to make like a running list of common questions that I get in these vlogs for all my writing stuff. But I think those two are the biggest ones. And gosh, and now I'm just procrastinating, aren't I? So my husband says he's gonna bring Zion home in about an hour and a half. So he's staying longer, which works out for me because I haven't even started yet. Enough procrastinating. It's time to write. An hour and a half is more than enough time to make some progress. So we can do this. Okay, here we go. one o'clock. Mosin just pulled in. I'm gonna go ahead and really quick run my word count here and see how did I do. Of this right here, I don't know if you can see it's highlighted, 696 words. Ah, I'm excited. I was about to skip into the next scene, that chapter 13 I showed you when I realized I think I know what the dark night of the soul is and it's really dark and I know who's gonna do it to her and ooh, it was another fun twist. I'm very excited about it, but they're home now, so I'm gonna call it good. I am just really thankful that I actually wrote something. <laughs> I really wanted this to be the vlog where I finished the book, but I think I still have a good ways to go, so here's hoping that'll be the next vlog. I have to say I'm very excited about the Dark Knight of the Soul in the story itself. It's way better than I expected. I did not outline it. I did not see it coming. It took me a while to think of it. it took probably a good chunk of my writing time, but it was worth it. 
it's gonna be good. Okay, Zion was sleeping in the car seat when he came home, so I decided to finish that thought that I had because I was so excited and I could picture what comes next. And as I went back into outline and flesh out my outline more, I realized that I'd actually written this chunk of chapter 13 as well, and I thought I'd end it there. So I added those words. Those were just 83 more words for a total of 779 today in roughly 50 minutes. I can't remember exactly. I think that's about what it was because I did procrastinate and make a couple TikTok videos but then I went back in here and I fleshed out my outline I actually deleted pretty much everything I have and this is all brand new I can picture exactly what comes next I'm so excited about it it's gonna be amazing it just fits so much better with the next step and oh my gosh I'm just really excited about it it's gonna be so much fun to write I wish I had time today but that's okay I will write again very soon and I know exactly what's gonna happen next which is always what you want in a writing session is Monday the 28th. There's four days left of March, right? Is that the month that we're in? I'm super excited because if my math is correct and if I stay on track, it's all a big if of course, but if everything falls into place the way I think it will and if I continue to, you know, actually be able to write the story, then I could finish this month if I write every single day, I think, hopefully. So Zion is right over here, right behind me here. I'm just censoring, but I'm very excited to say that I already wrote a good amount today because I woke up early and I wrote for an hour before, you know, coming out to start the day with him, I guess you could say. So my husband was watching him. He takes mornings, I take nights. Zion didn't wake up last night, so I got like a full night of sleep. I love it. He's doing, he's done 11 hours last night, 11 hours the night before. I can't remember past that because my brain, baby brain is so real. But anyway, before I share my word now, I just have to say I am super happy because <laughs> I was just finishing up editing the vlog about night writing that came out today as I'm recording this. And oh my gosh, I was celebrating nine hours then, but since then he's done a bunch of 10 and a half hours, a few 11 hours, and then two times he's done 12 hours straight through and then one time he did 12 hours where i got up in the middle but he still did 12 full hours besides that break in the middle otherwise it's been straight through you guys and i i never thought that i would be like celebrating in a vlog that i got to sleep but i'm very excited about it as any moms out there and dads too can imagine it's so nice <laughs> Anyway, back to the word count. I wrote this morning 1,310 words. And again, that was for 60 minutes I wrote. And so now my document is at a total of 22,097 words total. Last vlog that I ended, I had finished writing The Dark Knight of the Soul. So this is like the break into three. She's trying, if you've read the Save the Cat book, again, I always reference this book. And the five point finale starts with a plan, but the plan is not actually going to work because then it goes into a high tower surprise. So right Right now I just wrote the plan like she's or actually no sorry let me back up because there's first a break into three where they're having this revelation they're like oh my gosh I think I can actually make this work and so then they st um no actually no the first step in the five point finale is gathering the team I think I'm gonna have to go look but anyway <laughs> Jezebel doesn't exactly have a whole team. So in this case, you could consider it, like Save the Cat says, gathering up other things to get ready for the plan, so to speak. And so that's pretty much all I wrote today. And I I could have, again, I could have gone further. I'm very excited about that. So his little feet in the background. <laughs> Where are you going? This room is pure chaos because every morning his dad likes to take all the toys out and they have a little playtime with all the toys <laughs> but i'm sure zion loves it so that's totally fine anyway we're gonna go and we're gonna read a book and start nap time and then i don't know should i write some more i think i feel like i could but i have other things to do so i might just stick with mornings and see what i can get done in the mornings this week <laughs> i don't know i'll let you know how it goes It is 
Tuesday, March 29th, 1230. This little dude is, I think, just waking up. He keeps changing his mind, but I think this one's for real, so I'm about to go get him. But I wanted to quick report that I wrote 953 words this morning, and also since we're reporting sleep things, Zion slept 10 hours, but he went to bed at seven, so that meant he got up at five. So I definitely still had a very early morning, and I ended up going back to bed for a little bit, but I'm still a little bit tired. I definitely need to learn to go to bed earlier because we stayed up late and I was like, oh, I regret this. But anyway, very thankful that my husband was able to be home for a bit longer today so that I could have an hour to write. I'm really excited about how much I got done in that hour. I again feel like I could have done more, but I also almost want to go back and I feel like as I'm writing the ending and I'm starting to visualize story more as a whole, I'm starting to see little pieces that I could go back and add in. So for example, when you're fast drafting, sometimes you'll leave out things that just aren't relevant to the plot and they don't matter, but they're going to help the reader later. Like for example, I know I haven't really fleshed out Jezebel's room. So there are some details that came to me where I was like, oh, I could add this and that would make it just like, could totally picture it. Then there's also her outfits that again, aren't relevant to the story, but it's fun to picture and to be like, oh, okay, I can see her as she's going through the day and what she's doing. And uh, side note, I'm hoping to maybe start cover design soon because if I find a dress that's really unique and really fits how I visualize Jin and the Ginny dressing, I would probably rewrite the outfit to fit and match the cover and that'd be really fun. But anyway, he is definitely up now. So I'm gonna go get him and yeah, I'll try to check in again tomorrow, but maybe there's a slight, slight, slight chance that if I have the time and I'm in the mood, I might try to write again during one of his naps if they're long enough and fill in some of those places that I feel like I underdrafted originally, but now I can picture it. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so orange. <laughs> Today is Wednesday, March 30th. It's about 11 o'clock. Yesterday, I said that I was going to write more later. I did not. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I did not. But if I'm gonna finish this book by the end of the month, then I probably will have to write later today because I know that this video is coming out during Camp Nano, but I'm trying to finish drafting by the end of this month to wrap it up and start something new for Camp Nano. Let me back up. This morning I wrote 919 words in 60 minutes. Let's write this down. 23,961 words so far in 23 hours and 15 minutes. It's pretty much been a thousand words an hour, pretty steadily, which is very interesting to me. Like, I guess that's my average. I'm running out of stickers. So let's see if I can finish the book before I run out of stickers. That would be April 1st because I have two left. I guess if I don't want to burn out, I might have to do that. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's where we're at so far is, actually, what is the actual Word document? Let me zoom out so you can't see it. We have... 23,437 words in this document so far. But again, you have to keep in mind some of that is outlined. So I just finished writing chapter 14 right here this morning. This is what I wrote today. Plus, I actually went back in through the doc and I added stuff previously that I wanted to add in. So now, wow, this is so zoomed out. Let me zoom in a little bit. So now I have chapter 15 is outlined. There's going to be a lot more here, but this is what I have left for the outline. So yeah. Should I just, I don't know, spend time outlining and brainstorming today and then I can jump right into it tomorrow maybe? Like I said, I don't want to burn out and I'm having fun writing it, but I feel like every time I get to around a thousand words, I'm pretty much done for the day. So I don't know if I should push since I basically wrote almost a thousand words already. It's just so close. It's so freaking close. I can't wait to see what this ending is later. It's gonna be, I mean, I'm really loving where it's going, but can I do the ending justice? So far, it's better than my outline, but can I keep that up? I don't know, I don't know. There's always editing, right? But here's hoping that it's gonna be like an amazing first draft, as far as first drafts go. <laughs> It 
is Thursday, March 31st, 1 o'clock p.m. Just got little Boo Boo here down for his nap. And this little Boo Boo also, if you can see her, <laughs> she's so much easier to get down for her nap. But that's a different story. I am not done yet with the book. This was like the day that I wanted to finish, but I did write today. So funny story. I actually only had 30 minutes because I also wanted to run errands. I wanted to go to Target. I wanted to drop something off. I wanted to do a couple other things. And I only had a certain amount of time that my husband was able to stay home with Zion while I ran out and did those things. So I knew I needed to be out of the house at a certain point, which gave me 30 minutes to write. And I was like, okay, let's do this. So I didn't waffle around. I didn't get on my phone. I didn't, you know, sit there going, I wonder what I should write. I just was like, I gotta write. So I just started and I was shocked, you guys, because I wrote 1,006 words in 30 minutes. That's more than I wrote yesterday in twice that amount of time. <laughs> so I have written 24,967 words and then the total amount of time that it's taken me so far is just under 24 hours total. So yeah, it was like, it was really, really good. And I technically have one little word count sticker left where I could write tomorrow. But if I wait till tomorrow, will I actually finish the book tomorrow? I don't know because what I've written, if you know the five point finale in the Save the Cat story beats, then I have written the first of the five point finale, which is gathering the team. And I'm like right in the midst of it and it's going really well. But that leaves, let's see if I can remember this, gathering the team. Shoot, is it the plan? And then there's a high tower surprise or is the high tower surprise second? And then they have to dig down deep to come up with a new plan that's actually the better plan that they should have done all along that is like better and is showing that they're, they've grown and changed in the arc of the story. Did I say that right? I'll have to check, it's in my office and I'm too lazy to get up right now. So don't quote me on that. But yeah, I would say that this whole 1000 words that I wrote was roughly gathering the team. And then I'm about to move into the next and it's kind of it's kind of the second beat too if the second beat is actually making a plan i wish i could remember i'm gonna look so stupid if i'm wrong the point is the story's progressing okay <laughs> That's all you need to know. And so what I'm trying to get at is that's a lot of beats to write all tomorrow. Plus there's still the, um, what's called the final image where you close out the story and it often mirrors the opening image and kind of shows just how far the characters come. And it's that very satisfying closure that you want as a reader. So that's a lot that I'm leaving for tomorrow. So I'm thinking, do I write it now? Do I attempt to write a little bit more while he's sleeping? I... I'm not gonna lie, I would much rather watch a movie because it's been a long morning and I'm burnt out. It was a long night as well. I've got videos to edit. Speaking of which, I was looking back at the videos and I was laughing because I'm also kind of sharing like Zion's sleep journey and my eating journey, and but then I just sort of forget to share sometimes. So how the food journey is going <laughs> right now is I have um, half a cookie left from Crumble Cookie that we had last night, if that tells you anything. <laughs> about how I'm doing with not eating sugar. Don't judge me, okay? I've been craving chocolate. For the most part though, we're doing really good. There's some really yummy restaurants. Like for example, Panera's pretty big around the US at least, and they have some really good healthy options. So it's crisp and green. And then I would say the majority of the time what we do is my husband is I've been cooking, which is amazing. He makes chicken with different seasonings to try it out. And then he cooks up some veggies. So the best mix, in case you're wondering, is to cook up broccoli, carrots, and Brussels sprouts. And that mixture with the chicken is amazing. So good. You can do that with oil or butter. I would say butter is more tasty. Not necessarily the best for you, but we are slightly more relaxed now and it's actually really good. Like I will say I still love bread, but I, after we went back to like, after the 21 day reset, I would say that I didn't even want the bread as much. And shockingly, I didn't want sugar as much. And the weirdest part is I have a pretty high sugar tolerance, okay? Like I could eat chocolate all day long, but not really right now. At this point in time, it actually, if I have too much, it starts to make me sick. So this massive cookie, in here, let me show you. This massive like brownie and peanut butter cookie, I couldn't finish, which is good. That's a very good thing. So I would say that counts as a successful diet slash lifestyle change 
for the better. I just have to make sure that I don't go back completely to my old habits. And then as far as Zion sleep, it's been really fun looking back because I just was editing a video where I was flipping out about 10 and a half hours. And at this point he's done multiple 12 hour nights, a lot of them straight through and a lot of 11 hour nights straight through, which is just, oh my gosh, God knew that I needed a baby who would sleep good. And I'm so blessed. And sometimes he'll do 12 hours with waking up in the middle as well, which is still amazing. But I really, really love those straight through nights. It's been so refreshing to catch up on sleep. But the last two nights have been a little more rough because Zion, I guess he grew out of the diapers he's in. So we had to size up because he started like leaking out of them. So the poor little guy peed the bed and he was laying in and he's so patient that he started like just like slightly crying. And I'm like, this is unusual for him. I'm just going to go check and make sure he's okay. Cause usually he sleeps through the night. So I go to check and he's like laying in a puddle. I felt so bad for him. Not really a puddle, but you know, enough that we had to change his clothes and I just felt bad for the little dude. So hopefully now that we figured out the diaper situation, he'll go back to sleeping straight through the night. And anyway, I can't complain. I cannot complain because he's amazing. Can you tell I'm procrastinating because I am nervous about this. I haven't really addressed why this stresses me out to write during the day when I'm responsible for him, but I guess if I'm actually thinking about it, it's because I'm stressed that like the moment I start writing, he's going to wake up or the moment that I'm really invested in a scene or I have a thought that I want to pursue, he'll need me. But the truth is, I think I can develop the ability to come back to it. And I think I can start getting more flexible with interruptions because this is mom life, right? I mean, let me know if that's the case, because I assume that I'm going to need to develop this skill anyway. Might as well start now. <laughs> so I'm going to attempt it. I'm nervous even just saying that, but I'm going to give it a shot. Even if it's only 10 minutes, it's something, right? Oh, shoot. I guess I shouldn't have filled in the word count sticker for today then if I was going to keep going, but I can always adjust it. So, so far I have I've written 15 out of 31 days. So that's basically half the month. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna reward myself with a cookie and start writing. Okay, it's about 2.25 and I started around 1.15. So I wrote for about an hour and 10 minutes. He did wake up briefly, but he fell back asleep. So I kept going, which was really awesome. And let's see, so I highlighted where I stopped this morning and I wrote, oh my gosh, wow. I wrote all the way to here where the outline starts. So holy cow, I wrote a lot. Let's see how much this is. It looks like 1,633 words. And then total, I actually wrote, all right, let's update this. There we go, 2,636 words. And then let's update this page as well. So now we are at 26,597 words written total and almost 25 hours total. And today, 2,636 words. And thank goodness for my outline where it clearly said that the story beat is called Storming the Castle not the plan, which is so boring compared to storming the castle. So I did write where she stormed the castle, that story beat. And I wrote the high tower surprise, which is the third of the five point finale. The fourth part of the five point finale is the dig down deep where they're faced with a new possibility and they're sort of trying to form a new plan essentially and decide what to do. It's another deciding moment. And so I began writing that and that's kind of where I stopped because he started making noise and I'm like, you know what? I wrote a lot. I think this is a good place to stop until tomorrow tomorrow before I get burned out. I actually wrote quite a bit. I am so excited. The one day where I did an outline instead of actually writing story, I wrote 2,939 words, but otherwise this is the most that I've written in a day and it's the most I've written for an actual story in a single day. So that's encouraging. That means that my, you know, writing muscle is growing and it is getting better at getting in the zone faster, knowing what I want to write. It helps that I can really visualize this ending, but I always tell people writing is a muscle. You have to work out, so to speak. You have to put in the time and the effort and be okay with it not always going well in the beginning because that will help you grow the muscle and be better at it down the road. And I'm not kidding when I say that, but it's really fun to actually see proof of it right here in my own writing where I can show you guys. You really do have to just keep showing up and the writing muscle will grow and will get better as you go. Ah, okay, he's waking up. So that's my cue to go. I'm not sure what to do next for Camp Nano, which is basically starting tomorrow for me. Either way though, I know I need to outline book three because I need to know where I'm headed. And I also want to do an outlining video. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe if you aren't already, if you want to make sure you don't miss that one. But 
I'm really, really hoping that if all goes well, I might be able to finish this book tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. It really depends on Oh no, 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 no. Oh gosh, I just remembered my mom and grandma are coming over in the morning and most likely they'll wanna stay the whole morning. And then I'm supposed to go see my friend who has a new puppy and her twin girls who are just born like a month after Zion in the afternoon. So I don't know when I'll be writing. I guess, I mean, I might still be able to wake up early. So that's gonna be the goal, but I really don't know. It'll be okay, cause I'm gonna wake up early and try to write in the morning. Oh my gosh, I hope I can do it. Wish me luck, I guess I'll let you know tomorrow. I finished the novel. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just wrote this morning for, I wanna say 80 minutes, so I woke up extra early to make sure that I got it done before this crazy day gets started, and I wrote, I gotta go check, hold on. 1,302 words, and on this page, so we have a finished first draft, 26 hours, 15 minutes total to write 27,899 words. The actual bird doc though, because I deleted some of those, is 25,978 words, so just under 26,000. We have currently 17 chapters total and lots of comments with things I gotta come back and add. Some of these chapters will probably get blended together because they're more scenes than full chapters. So there you have it. I wrote 25 different days to get a finished first draft. <sighs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. Feels so good. Oh my gosh, we have so much to recap, not just for the story, although, wow, a lot has changed. It's kind of crazy, but also like the whole sleep situation. I forgot about all that and the health stuff that I was sharing. I have so many revelations since then. So first things first though, it was so funny to watch me vlog because now my office is out here in like the main I don't know what to call this room. Unfortunately, this whole area is still super chaotic. As you can see, I haven't changed that aspect of myself in the slightest. Like, when on deadline, which I am right now, everything else gets put on hold, and that's how it is. <laughs> and the guest bed is here in the same room as with all of my books. Okay, there it's focused. All of my books here, and as you can see, I've got the latest one here on the shelf. I'm actually thinking I wanna move this into like our room because then I can see it all the time and wake up to it and why not? I just don't come in this room very much and so I miss my bookshelf, but that's one minor change. Let's talk about everything else that's changed. <laughs> There's a lot. Number one, I probably shouldn't have pushed so hard. Honestly, looking back, I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> Second of all, I'm pretty sure I had some very serious postpartum anxiety revolving specifically around sleep for whatever reason, which you can tell when you watch those vlogs and that's like brought up all the time, both Zion's sleep and my own. And that leads to the health stuff. So I did start working with a doctor, integrative medicine, I think it's called. And so she did all kinds of tests, you know, let's check your thyroid, let's check. I don't even remember at this point, there were so many tests that we did. And finally, probably a year-ish in, she finally got some results that were helpful. Specifically, the biggest one that I always remember is cortisol. We did a test, it's like a saliva test, and my cortisol levels were through the roof high. And she's like, that makes sense for a new mom, it's pretty common. And so she prescribed ashwagandha, if you've ever heard of that, it's amazing. I was taking it at night and then she's like, actually for a short period, if you want to, you can do morning and night. So basically I was struggling to get back to sleep because once I woke up, the cortisol hormone was so wild from just new mama life and not being used to it that Zion screams, just brief screams. And then I would feed him and then he'd go back to sleep and I couldn't go back to sleep. And so the ashwagandha helped actually combat the cortisol and helped kind of diffuse it, I guess you could say. I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, but if you wanna research it, I highly recommend it. I actually tell all my friends how much it has helped me and my sleep improve over the last few months. It's been amazing. My last doctor visit was back in January, so I had to go look it up. That was like six months ago, but cortisol elevated, um, inflammation, and then trouble digesting. So I added a digestive enzyme to the vitamins I was taking because basically I was trying to get my iron up for a full year and it 
barely moved and same with vitamin D and a few other things. So she's like, wow, you are not, what is the word? Absorbing these vitamins the way you should be. And so here's some things you can do. So that was really, really helpful. But then on top of that, I learned that I have PCOS. And so if you know anything about that or if you struggle with it, it's it affects everything. And so it's a really actually cool revelation because now I know what I can do about it. And so on the positive side, I have started like eating more protein, making walking like calm walks that don't elevate cortisol, a really big part of my routine with Zion, which he loves. And then uh, I am working on trying to get more like strength training type workouts, which again, don't increase the cortisol issue. I wanted to share that in case you're curious, but now let's talk about the book because oh my goodness, did the book change a lot. <laughs> As I was talking about the dark night of the soul and what was happening there, that changed. I mean, the essence of it didn't change, but how it went down, totally different, rewrote it. The beginning, the first chapter, it was a great first chapter and I used what happened there, but it ended up being moved somewhere else and I ended up completely rewriting, or actually technically I added a bunch of flashbacks, then I deleted them all and then I completely rewrote two brand new first chapters that I think are even better. It's just shocking to me how much it's changed. The first draft was 25,978 words and then at the end of this last round, it was over 50,000. I'll put the final word count right here. And so it actually changed by 28,221 words. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, it more than doubled. That's wild. <laughs> That's just crazy. So that's how much it changed the word count. The feelings, like I said, were very much like all over the map. I didn't realize how hard it was for me sometimes. So again, looking back, I probably should have taken it easier, but do I ever do that? No. <laughs> and so it is what it is. It was really fun and a really cool experience just to see how much I got done during that time. And then what happened since then, I obviously edited the book. It went through developmental edits. I sent it to my first critique partner for help with that. Then I edited it again and sent it to beta readers. And then I edited it again and sent it to my other critique partner who helped me more with line edits but also with developmental edits still and then I did that final proofreading which I just did a vlog on and I'll link it after this video if you want to watch and see the final final iteration of this book but it's just gone so far over a year and a half and it's blowing my mind looking back it was so cool I'm so glad that I vlogged and the craziest thing that I got out of this was like how many things I did that are helpful to me now that I can go back and try again. Like I forgot about my experiments of writing at different times of day. Like if something's not working, try something new or the different strategies that I had in that very first vlog for how to get stuff done. And they're valuable to me even now. They're great reminders to me to try those things again if I haven't recently. So I hope that they were valuable to you too because this was so cool. This book is linked below. It's officially available to buy as of this video. It's book two in the series and the final book, book three, is officially on pre-order if you're watching this as well. And the next video coming out is the cover reveal. So subscribe if you want to see that. It's my favorite cover out of all three and I can't wait to show you guys and I can't wait for you to read Jezebel's story. I hope you love it and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!